All righty. Hello, everyone. How are we doing tonight? Hope you're doing well. Um, this is a uh, this is a special stream that I thought I would do tonight because um, I actually just today revised my notes for that I use or I've used for speedrunning Newtopia, specifically the 100% category, and uh, I've spent a lot of time, you know, while running this game, trying to encourage others to get involved with the game and, and learn it and things like that. And people ask me, well, can I borrow your notes? Can I see, you know, what, what resources that you have in order to do this? And I had my own notes, but I haven't used them in a long time and they desperately needed updating. And I finally got around to doing it today. Uh, and I have made them available in my discord. And you see that information over there on the right hand side, as far as joining my discord. If you have not done so already, there is a dedicated Newtopia channel I have pinned my my updated notes in there, and that actually is what I'm going to be using, and I probably should pull those up so that I can follow along with myself and know that everything is correct, so that um, you can follow along with me, and um, you can see how these notes work and, and what I'm doing. So uh, if you have not done so go ahead and get into uh go ahead and get into my discord server get yourself those notes pulled up they are all laid out they are kind of it is kind of an unconventional system that i use i will admit when it comes to how these notes are typed out so if it is not readily apparent to you what some of these things mean um then that's perfectly fine. I totally understand that. Uh, I'm kind of my own animal when it comes to that sort of thing. But um, don't worry about it. We will. Uh, I will be sure to, as I'm going along and as I'm going through all of the notes piece by piece, I will be sure to talk about what it is that you're looking at and what it means. And you can kind of compare it to what you're seeing here. And you'll. it'll hopefully make... A lot more sense if I'm doing it like that okay all right so first things first the game itself uh, this is a game on the TurboGrafx-16 raise your hand if you have one of those lying around oh just me okay yeah I get it um, that probably means that those of you who are watching are going to be emulating this and that's perfectly fine that's how I learned um, when I first captured world record in both categories. It was done on emulators, so um, it's perfectly fine to do that. As the um, as the speedrun.com admin for this game, uh, using uh, using an emulator is perfectly acceptable. You can submit runs done on emulator. The one that I'm going to recommend is BizHawk. Uh, that's the one I'm actually going to be using right now. Um, I do have hardware for the game, but for the purpose of the tutorial, just because I'm going to want to be doing things over and over again for demonstration purposes, I will be doing this on emulator. Um, BizHawk is one that I've used extensively for this game, and I've had no problems with it. Um, so that is uh, something that, that I would recommend for you to do. Um, so, and then as far as, as far as obtaining a ROM for this game, um, I can't like give that to you for reasons, which should be obvious if you know what it, um, you know, distributing ROMs is all about, but there are places that you can, uh, places you can go, people you can ask, uh, if you want to get a, a copy of that ROM. So, um, by all means. Um, you know, you'll, you'll be able to find a copy of it out there somewhere, I'm sure. Okay, so, uh, one thing that I'm going to be doing here, and, oh, whoops, oh, okay, yeah, you can see it there. Um, you see in the upper left-hand corner, I'm going to have, uh, I'm going to have my input display on here. Hopefully this will help when I, especially when I'm doing certain things, um, and you'll be able to kind of see how I'm doing it with my, uh, with my inputs, and that'll help to make sense of some things as well. One other note here. This version that I'm going to be using for this demonstration is the Japanese version. Now, when it comes to speedrunning it, this is going to be the fastest one because the text scrolling in here is much faster than the U.S. version. However, I would recommend when you're learning, and even if you want to do runs on it, it's fine. You can. You can run um, and learn 
on the U.S. version, uh, unless you can unless you can read Japanese, in which case, by all means, just do that. That's fine. Uh, but if you can't, if you would rather read things in English the first time around, um, you know, when it comes to certain menus, um, especially when it comes to doing the save and quit, which we'll talk about, um, or if you want to just, you know, kind of see some of the lore from your for yourself when it comes to the. Uh, the people that you're talking to, by all means, use the U.S. version. But when it comes, but but just know that the fastest version, which is what we're going to be doing here, because this is, you know, what will hopefully be the end product. Um, we are going to be using the the Japanese version. Okay, so um, uh, I am I'm obviously doing this stream live here, so that you can um, so that you can watch and follow along live with me and ask questions in the moment if you'd like to as well. Um, but this is going to be made into a vod, and that's going to be kind of the purpose of it is to have it as a um have it as a tutorial vod that people can refer to at any time uh, at their own pace so that when it comes to learning it they can you know do their own things with the techniques so um i'm going to be going pretty in depth here so there are going to be some things that um you know if you want to know the the basics of it, you'll be able to glean that from it. But if you really want to get some of the high level strats, I'm going to try to go into that stuff as well. So don't feel too you know daunted or or anything like that when it comes to some of the and and especially if it's if it's specific you know tech that that is that is more complicated. I'll be sure to point that out as well. Now the reason why we're doing the 100% category is because. In my opinion, it is the more beginner friendly, the more beginner accessible version of the game. If you would prefer to learn the any percent category either instead or to learn both, by all means, please continue to watch this tutorial. Any items that I do not pick up in my route for any percent, I will be sure to point that out so that you uh, you will know what uh, you know what I you do or don't use for the um for the the any percent run now for you for your own purposes like well i want to get this or that because i feel like it'll make things a little easier or give me a little more safety um by all means if you're running any percent you know grab whatever you feel like i'm just going to tell you what i personally get uh for any percent and if there's things you'd like to add to that that's totally up to you when it comes to uh, when it comes to what you want to do okay all right so Disclaimers out of the way. Um, one last time, I will point out there. Um, you use the the Discord function in my uh, in chat. That'll get you a link into my Discord. You go into the Newtopia channel. You'll be able to pick up the notes that uh, I will be referring to, and you know I'll, I'll even be making specific references to it the whole time that I'm going through this, so that you can follow along. And you know where we're at. All right. Okay. So with that being said, um, let's go ahead and. Uh, let's go ahead and get started. Alrighty. So, um, time starts as soon as you press... Oh, and uh, oh, real quick, the controls. Um, it's For those of you that are fam familiar with an NES controller, it's almost identical. You've got up, down, left, and right. Yo, what's up, Murdoch? Thank you for the good luck. Um, you've got... Uh, instead of select and start, you've got select and run, uh, which are the two in the middle. And then instead of the B and A buttons, you have Roman numeral two and Roman numeral one. Um, the controls for the game are... Oh, we're not starting yet. Uh, the controls for the game is up, down, left, and right. Um, obviously, is the directions that will move your character. The run button is going to pull up and, and also shut the menu that you will use for selecting items in your inventory. Uh, the two button, which would correspond to B on an NES controller, uh, is what you see. That's two that pops up there. That is what will uh, use the item that you've selected. And then uh, the one button, the Roman numeral one, is going to um, is is going. To, that's how you stab with your sword. All right. So timing will start as soon as you press run there on the start command. You got a cut scene here. There's nothing you can do with this. You just gotta wait. We gotta let Dirth walk his way into the temple, steal the Princess Aurora, teleport out of here. In marches Jazeta. I'm actually gonna move this over here real quick. Okay, cool. All right. So text boxes here. One, we're mashing. We're matching the one button to get through them. That's the third one. 
four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, I'm gonna stop here. So this is the ninth text box. So I'm gonna press one to clear it like I normally would. Now, normally after this, there are two more text boxes. But once I get to, once I clear the ninth one, now I'm gonna start mashing with two and that's going to skip the final text box altogether and, and clear things out. So, once you clear that out, you can immediately start walking down these two screens and out of the palace. Here we are in the first overworld, the land sphere. Very first thing we're going to do is we're going to go in this staircase here. Talk to this guy. We have to clear five text boxes here. One, two, three, four, and five. The way that you open treasure chests is you just is you just walk directly into them. So what we're picking up here is the Book of Revival. We're getting this A because we need to for 100%. And um, B, it also is going to allow us to save our game. So when you're learning how to speedrun this game, being able to save and, and reset and whatnot is going to be very important. Okay. So after you get out of there, you're going to leave. You're going to go one screen to the left and you're going to go into this cave. We got three text boxes to clear here. We got one, two and three. We're going to pick up this treasure chest. It is four bombs. This treasure chest is going to be one dose of medicine. And then we leave. And then from here, we're going to go east. One. Two. Now we usually will line up with this guy and then kill him to get him out of the way. Three. Sometimes you'll have to clear out the scorpions here. Four. Cherries will refill your life by one. And five screens to the east. And then we can't go any further east, so now we go up north one. Alright, now before I get onto the screen, I'm actually gonna lay down a, uh, a, a, a save here. So, here. so here's the objective on this next screen. Hold on, let's... So we want to get up here and go one, two stabs there, and then we're going to push this rock on the bottom right and then go in the staircase. But here's the deal. In order to do this... Oops. Shoot. Okay. In order to do this efficiently, you need to get in there and... So that enemy is always going to be in that same place every time. You need to get in there and just get him as soon as possible. So come up and just immediately turn left and stab twice. Okay? Bottom right rock, we just push it up. Just like you're opening a treasure chest, you just put yourself into it. And then we go into this staircase here. Three text boxes to clear. One, two, three. And we get the fire wand. An extremely important item that we are going to use extensively throughout the rest of the run. Once you come out, you're going to go west. And then you'll go north. Excuse me. Uh, you'll go north twice. And then west. West twice. Okay. I'm just going to kill this guy. No, maybe I'm not. Alright. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm actually going to create a save state here. Um, so what I'm, about to, what I'm about to demonstrate on this next screen here is going to be... Um, an example of certain enemies that have a static movement pattern when you initially enter the screen. So, okay, so let me let me start out... Um, you know what? I am actually going to kill this guy. Get him out of my way. So I'm going to enter the screen one tile... You know, we're just going to kill both these guys so I can have some time to stand here and talk about this. You die. Okay. So I'm going to enter this screen with one full tile to my right coming up here. And in fact, now we're going to save. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to walk up, and then left, and then up. Block that arrow, and up and around him, and there we go. Okay, so you can see that the enemies will always move. This is not a product of the save state. This does it for me every time on hardware as well. Block his arrow, and come up and around here. And it actually looks really cool when you do it right, because you got these enemies all going in these directions. Seems like they're closing in on you, but you just kind of thread the needle and go through them, okay? One more time. 
as soon as that cow gets to you, you're gonna move up and then like that. Oops, nope, I didn't turn to the left soon enough. So we go left, up, left, block. Oh no, I didn't go over far enough. Move, here we go. Block that, up and around, and there we go. All right, once you get to this screen, uh, the bugs, so, so once you're, so once you're in this spot on the top part of this next screen, you're just gonna keep moving left and then go up and around that bug a little bit. Now, on this on this next screen here, um, this is another static movement pattern. So I'm going to walk up. I'm going to hesitate ever so slightly there. And you just watch what I do on the stairs. I'm going to wait just that briefly. Um, because if you don't, if you just keep walking, you're going to go careening right into that fly. So you're just going to come up here and wait and then go. And then you go up again. We're going to go to the west here. This screen is interesting. These lizard men sometimes will get in your way and sometimes they won't. If they don't, walk past them because um, because you don't really need you don't really need to kill them. All right. So now we're going to use our bombs for the first time. So we're going to go to our menu here. Your icon is automatically going to be on bombs if you've never opened it before. So basically you can just open your menu and then close it and it will select the bombs. We're going to stand in front of this statue here. And, um, and we're going to uh, let it explode. I didn't need to move out of the way of the bombs. I just did, just so you could see how it looked. Um, after you've laid the bomb, we're going to want to switch to the fire wand because that's the next item that we'll be using. So what we're doing in here is we're talking to this guy, and he is going to increase our life by a full segment. Two text boxes to clear after you get that segment. One and two, and then you can get out. Okay. Now... Getting that segment of life is going to be important for several reasons. First of all, it makes you more difficult to kill. Second of all, it's going to get you closer to having more potent, more potent power with the fire rod. And we'll get a lot more into that as we go along. But uh, this is a detour that takes about a minute, and it's worth it. You have to do it. You also have to do it for. Um, you also have to do it for 100% because you need to get. You need to have a full life bar by the time you're done. So, anyway, so we backtrack here to this screen where I had you hesitate with the flies, and now we're gonna go east. So, uh, we're gonna keep going east here. Third of all, it's 100%, so you do need it. That is right, Dave. Alrighty. We'll need to shoot him out of the way. Another, another example of static uh, enemy movement coming up here when we come down on the screen. That soldier is always going to come right up next to us, but as long as you keep walking down and then to the right and move over, he'll never hit you. Oh, whoops! I'm sorry. Let's let's do another uh, another example of static movement pattern here. This is how this screen is going to go optimal. You're going to move, hug the wall, hit him once, and hit him twice, and then that way um, he won't, because because you really can't you really can't like go underneath them. I mean, I guess you could come down here. No, nope, but see then, but then he comes at you that way. So because you're always because you're going to hug this wall here, you're going to want to continue to hug that wall up top and then hit it once and then twice to get him out of the way, and then you can walk straight into the crypt. All right. So as you so if you're following along in my notes, you notice this is the first crypt that we've gone into, but I've noted it as crypt number two. That is not a typo. Um, we're gonna in each of the spheres we're gonna do the crypts um, out of order. So the first. Sphere has crypts one and two. Next one has three and four, five and six, seven and eight, so on. Um, so in this one, we're going to do the second one first, and the first one second. In each of the spheres, we're going to do this. So first thing we do is we're going to come north. We're going to hope that this bat doesn't get in our way, and he doesn't. And then actually, you know what? Here, uh, oh, I didn't mean to come off that. So let's go ahead and lay down a safe there. All right. So in this room here. Um, you see that door has shut, and now we need to uh, push a block in order to open it. But we cannot push that block until we have cleared the room of enemies. So, ooh, we already have a ring. That's fantastic for, for the tutorial. Um, okay. All right. So, uh, what I'm using here is G. I'm pressing 2 to use the fire wand. Um, ooh, man, I don't want to get rid of that because I have the ring now. Anyway, so... Um, now, the, even though you cannot move diagonally, you can fire it diagonally. So use this to your advantage when it comes to, uh, when, it, when it comes to killing enemies. Uh, so in this room, 
We're going to push the block on the right. Doesn't matter which direction you push it, um, but as soon as you do, it's going to open this door. Now, oh, uh, you know what? Mm, shoot. So when it comes to these NPCs that you encounter in crypts that do not give you anything, if th these guys just talk to you, you actually don't need to mash through their text boxes. I think this guy has like three or four text boxes. I don't even know. Um, but if they don't give you anything, all you can do is press two and it clears the whole conversation. In fact, you don't even need to wait for it to fill. We're actually gonna, you'll, I'll actually demonstrate this on the way back. As soon as the text box opens and text starts to scroll, you're safe to press two there. I'll demonstrate this on the way back. Once we've cleared these text boxes, we go east. All right. You know what? Here we go. Oh, actually, I'll demonstrate it here. So, he got maybe two or three characters in that. I pressed two to clear it. All right. So, in this next room here, um, we're going to fight these earwig enemies. Typically, they're going to move... Uh, they're going to try to rush you down. This is a fantastic example of stacking enemies, and you'll see what I mean. When enemies are right on top of each other, you can hit them... Um, you, you can hit them all at the same time with the single attack. This is much, much more easy to accomplish with your sword than it is with your fire wand. So you're going to see these enemies are going to converge here, and then boom, boom, boom. I killed all three of them in basically just four hits, okay? And you can experiment around with that. Now you got to kill the other three. Um, three hits with the fire wand is going to be enough. Um, so here we go. Boom and boom. Um, use the fire wand liberally because... It's a great way to save time by killing enemies, but also to keep them at a distance so that um, so that you're not taking damage. All right, in this next room, we've got these big bats to kill. Um, three hits from the fire wand will take them down. Um, you see how I'm kind of doing this where I'm retreating and then turning around immediately to fire? Um, that's a good way to keep that distance that I'm talking about between you and the enemies so that they don't rush you down. You have to kill all of them, the doors open, and now we go north. This is going to be our first instance of bombing walls um, in a dungeon. So we're g you need to play the... Despite the, um, despite the display for the smoke, the actual hurt box for bombs is rather small. You need to place them directly against the wall in order for them to be effective. So you saw that I got right up next to the wall. After you plant the bomb, we're going to want the fire wand for this next room. Alright, so we're doing this for that treasure chest that's in there. But we also want to kill all the enemies in here because we're going to need... We're going to need a bomb pack at some point within the next couple of crypts. Um, and there it is. These, these wolf enemies are notorious for dropping them. So we're going to come up here and get this treasure chest. This is the crypt key. Every crypt has exactly one key, um, and each key is unique to that crypt. Um, and you need it in order to open the door to the boss's room for the crypt. So we have to have to make sure we get that. So once we get it, we're going to backtrack all the way out to that room where that old man was chained up. And you'll see here, and again, just... just Oh, might as well lay it down to save here. You'll see here, watch, as soon as the text pops up, we're going to press 2 and it's all going to disappear. The entire conversation goes away. Now we're going to go west, now that we have the key. Um, we have to kill all these blob enemies um, here. They move rather erratically. I definitely recommend uh, using the fire wand to kill them. So, once that's done... Oh, another ring. Okay. Okay. Uh, once that's done, the door opens up and we go down here. So, uh, we want to get to that treasure chest. I recommend going around to the left, clearing out the enemies along the way, opening up the treasure chest, and what we get here is the steel sword. This is going to double our sword attack power. Now, instead of our sword killing these enemies in two hits, it will kill them in only one. So, if you're able to get up nice and close to them and kill them with your sword, do it because it'll save you time. Once we get the sword, we go back out. And now we move to the west. Um, these... Oh, oh, you know what? Shoot. Hold on. Let me demonstrate this before I get in here. So, uh, those skeleton enemies that you saw, they essentially have three hit points. Your sword will hit them for two, whereas your fireball will only hit them for one. So what we're going to do for the enemies that are right next to us is we're going to go sword, fireball, sword... Whoops, I might as well get that. 
Uh, and fireball. Sword, fireball, sword, and fireball. Okay. The coins, don't worry about those. Um, you don't need money in the game. If you do want to do any shopping, you have the option to do that. Um, but you won't need to collect money for it. There's a place you'll get it, so just keep that in mind. Once you kill all of them, you push this block, and we go west. Alright. We don't need to worry about these bats, but we do need to worry about the enemies in here. Again, that sword strike is going to do... Ooh, we got an hourglass there. That sword strike will do two hits of damage, and then the fireball can do the other one. So the hourglass, um, as you can see here, it's frozen all the enemies, but it only has a limited time, so... Um, and, while enemies are frozen, they can still do damage to you if you make contact with them. So be careful about that. So you have to kill all the enemies to open the doors. And now we are going to come... We are going to go south. We now need to bomb to the west. Okay, now these snakes love to get in the way. I don't know if that... Oh, that actually did do it. So, you want to plant the bomb right here in the middle of that wall. And then kill any snakes that would get in your way while you're waiting for it to open up. Yo, Scala Kitty. Yes, you are. All right. So now we're going to switch back to our wand, um, and uh, this is the last room before the boss. Actually, no, no, hold on. We're going to lay down a, a save state turnaround. Now we're going to lay down a save state. All right, so a couple things I want to demonstrate in this room. First of all, you see this brown block here on the edge that's a different color than the others? If you get too close to it, it's going to hit you with those swords. So keep a safe distance for that. And you see how much damage it does. It's ridiculous. So just keep that in mind, okay? All right, so uh, we need to kill all the enemies before we can get into this room. Just like we did with the skeletons and the earwigs and whatnot. Um, they have three hit points. So one sword strike and one fireball will kill them. You don't want them running into the corner because that's just going to waste time. But at least we got them where we want them, I guess. So one sword strike, and you see how that sword strike was effective at hitting both of them at the same time, but the fireball was not. All right, once all of the enemies have been defeated, we can now go into the boss room. We're going to lay down the safe state here. All right. Notice how vertical doors, either on the top or the bottom, are two tiles wide. There are going to be many rooms, and this one is no exception, where... We're entering either on the left tile, the right tile, or in between the two is going to be very important. So when it is, I will be sure to point that out. And it is very important that when you go into this boss's room, you enter it on the right-hand side, and I will show you why. Okay? So, I tell you what, let's just walk in here, and you can see how this boss behaves. So what it does is it is it will walk around, it will split apart, its center will charge at you... And it will just repeat this process, okay? Now, hitting that core, as you might imagine, is how you do damage to this boss. You cannot do damage to it while it is fully assembled, all right? But here's the nice thing about this boss. We're going to use this to our advantage. You see these pieces that are flying out at me? You can destroy them with your sword, okay? This is a very nice function of being able to kill this boss quickly. This is why it's important to be on the right-hand tile when we walk in. What we're going to do is we're going to walk straight up, and you're going to time it perfectly. Oops, no, I didn't do it there. That's, that's how you want to start it out, is you want to time it so when you're right about here, those two pieces that come flying down are going to get destroyed by your sword, and you're also going to hit the center at the same time. So it's like right about there that you do it, okay? One more time. Alright, now, once you do this properly, so you have to hit the core 11 times in order to destroy it. Now, with any luck, you can do this in two cycles, but the first cycle, you want to get a good start here. This is going to be a great example, and there's going to be many examples of using this in the future. You see how quickly I can swing my sword there, okay? The amount of time between those sword swings is less than the amount of time that bosses, or any, or really any enemy for that matter, will be in its iframes. So when it comes to 
um, when it comes to striking at them, you are not going to mash. And you can see, you can see that little one flashing in the corner uh, above my fire rod. That's every time I press the button. If you want to get an idea for the timing, watch, watch that one there. Okay, and you're gonna get, and you're gonna get a sense of what the rhythm needs to be in order to kill these bosses. What's up, Dog Belliver? All right, so, so watch. Dang it, don't watch that. I didn't let it come down far enough. Jesus, come on. So there you go, I was able to do sit. Now, after you hit it the first time, you want to keep moving up. And you, you notice that, you notice that the reason why we do that is because it's closer it's closer to the wall so that the recoil from it is shorter so that by the time you're ready to hit it again, it's still in range. I have to admit, adjusting to emulator timing has, is, is kind of tough. All right, so that's what the first cycle should ideally look like. Now the second cycle, we're gonna wanna just stay directly beneath him at about this distance. And when he pops up, you wanna hit it five times. Now, in this case, and you saw what I did there, it is not necessary to destroy the pieces that come down. You can position yourself such that you, those will shoot between you and you can move up and then stab it the five times. So so the, the timing window there is a little more forgiving. Watch again. Whoops, okay, I only did five that time. Let's see if I can get six here. See, here, now I'm gonna wanna be a little more greedy. I probably won't get it. Nope, okay. So. Now. Let's see if I can do this ideally here. Okay, there we go. Keep a safe distance, stay beneath him. As soon as the eyes start to flash, that's your indicator for when he's about to split apart. You see his eyes flash yellow. Now, let's say you now if you get hit by any of those segments, it's too it's too life to you. It's it, it's too um, full hit points full of damage. So that's a lot. If you come in here and you're low on hit points and you want to play it a little safer, I'll show you how to do this boss totally safely. You could stand down here and wait until it all splits apart um, so that they come nowhere near you. Wait until they all split apart. You can come and do like four hits there. Just stay right below him. The bottom two parts will go right by you, and then one, two, and three. So you do it in three cycles instead of two. Three cycles is perfectly fine, especially if you're learning. So if you're, if you, the timing on that is very tight to do it in two cycles. So if you're having a hard time with it, don't get discouraged. Just do it, and I'll do it again. Just do what I did there. Just hang out directly below him. Let the pieces come apart. Wait until it's nice and safe, and then just you can hang out at the bottom of the screen. As soon as you see the eyes flash. You know, kind of stay a safe distance, um, let the pieces go by you, and then just hit it, you know, enough times to kill it. There you go. All right. So that's enough on that. Once you kill him, we go up, we get this treasure chest. It is the medallion. That's one of eight that we will need to collect. Um, and then we go, it teleports us back to the temple. Okay. Now, text boxes. Every time you clear a temple, you're going to hear that -na 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 -na. and then your life is going to be refilled. Once your life is full, you can begin mashing. She's got a few text boxes, but I'm going to but we're going to do pretty much the same thing that we did when we were first talking to her. After this, um, after your life gets filled, you're going to press one to clear the first text box and then mash two. And that's going to clear and that's going to skip the rest of the conversation. As soon as that medallion is affixed, we're gonna go ahead and walk down and out of here. Alright. Tringle get, exactly. Alright, so now we're off to crypt number one, which we're gonna do second. South, east, north, north again, to the west. North. 
north a second time. Now to the west. West again. North. North a second time. Oh, whoops! Sorry, you go. West. North. Indicated by the arrow, we go east. And then into crypt number one. Alright. One well, way we can go here is east. And the north. We can walk right by these guys going north. Now we go east. Alright. Now we need to kill these three bats in order to open that door there to the right. Um, if possible, stab them with your sword because it'll kill them in one hit. But you don't want to rely on that. See, that, that's awkward for me to try and kill him with my sword there. So I just hit him with the fireballs instead. Once all three are dead, you're going to come into here. Now, <laughs> not Triforce acquired, exactly. Now, what's coming up here is one of the more, is one of the rooms that can really irritate me more than any other in the game. It's, it's what I like to call Utopia's Belfry. We have to kill these four bats. However, they have a fantastic habit of getting all the way up there in the top of the screen or circling all the way around where it's difficult to hit them um, and just prolonging this. So anyway, you have to kill them all. Then you need to push this block. Do not push this block to the left. Either push it up or down. Um, that's not only going to open the door, but it's going to light access in here to get the key, which obviously you need to get. Once you get it, we're going to backtrack. Go back to the west. Go back to the west again with this room that had the single fire spitting guy. Now we're going to go north. We're going to go north again. I'm going to lay down a save state here. Um, this room, uh, I'm going to show you, hopefully, and hopefully I do it right the first time here. Uh, I'm going to show you how to do this room as quickly as possible. I'm going to come up, throw a fireball that way, throw a fireball up, stab him, stab him, fireball, stab. And that's going to, oh, I'll do it again. So... Fireball at him, fireball at him, stab, stab, fireball, stab, okay? And then once you do that, uh, that's going to open up the doors. We're going to go west here, um, and we are going to, whoops, get hit by him apparently. Uh, we are going to collect our steel armor. Boy. I'm going to kill him. Go back out here. Now we can go north. Again, guy chained up here. Two to just skip his text. All right. Now, what's coming up here is, is a room that can be very problematic and have you take a lot of damage uh, if, uh, if your enemies are uncooperative. First thing we're going to do is we're going to drop a bomb here. Switch to our wand. Once it, I'm going to lay down a save here. All right. So what's coming up in this room are six of the earwig enemies, which we need to destroy in order to open the door to on on the east side so ideally and you, you see okay you see the and in fact here we go we're gonna do this here you see the pattern that they're in there's three on the top three on the bottom and like i said typically they will move towards you now this is going to be a fantastic example of how wonky the swords hurt box is in this game these earwigs typically are going to line up, you know, when it comes to your Y-axis. They're either going to be right on your Y-axis, they're going to be a half tile above, or they're going to be a half tile below. Now, the last of those three is what you don't want, because your sword, your sword's hurt box is not going to hit those enemies. It'll hit the ones right in front of you and a half tile above, but not the ones below. So let's see what these guys decide to do here. That is beautiful. You see, all we do here is we just stab, stab, and stab. It's not always like that. And I'll show you, I'm going to show you an example here. Let's see if they do it. Oh my goodness. It, it might be, you know, it might be a product of that save state. Hold on. Let's see if we can kind of jumble up the RNG here. There's no way I get that, I get that nicely two times in a row. Let's see if they do it again. No, nope. Okay. Anyway, shoot. Well, I kind of wanted them to give me a bad pattern there. If they end up on that... Well, I tell you what. Let me see if I can kind of force it. No, never mind. I got to do this. So, so if I move up... Oh, my God. Look at this. They just 
refuse to be uncooperative. Okay, so here you go. So, though, so, um, and let me unpause. So, those, oh, shoot. You can't see me. So, so, uh, can you see my mouse pointer on the screen? Oh, you can't. All right. So, of the two that are, are facing me, the one below me is on that half tile below. I can't hit him with my sword, but I can hit him with my fire wand. So, let me unpause here. Man, I really wish I could demonstrate this, but they are just going to be... Yeah, look at this. They're just going to be nice. All right. So just know that um, that you might have to use your fire wand. And you, and you can see the, the, the sprite for that. You see how it how it, it is... The bottom of it is in that half tile below me. That's how you would be able to hit them. Now, one thing that's really... In, and, and in fact, here, I'll demonstrate it with this. One thing that's really important to know about... Oh, okay, so that guy's on the half tile below. Now, one thing that is really important to note... And you can kind of see it there. And we can see it right here. If there, if enemies drop anything, <clears throat> your fireballs will not go through them. So when you have a bunch of enemies like that, and you're trying to hose them down with fire, especially at this level of fire, it's not always going to be effective because those things are going to block your way. So. Anyway, let's just go ahead and just get through this room. Just so we can move on. Okay, so that guy, see how I had to hit him with the fire there? What? See, look at my sword. Going right over him. That's a fantastic example there. Gotta hit him with the fire instead. Okay? Alright. Cool. Alrighty. Last room before the boss. We're gonna come down here. We're gonna hit that guy with the fire. Hit that guy with the fire. And then stab them both. Stab and fire. Stab and fire. That room's pretty simple. Alright. So, boss time. Uh, I'm going to make sure to enter on the left-hand tile here so that um, <clears throat> we can be sure to be in best position to continuously do damage to this boss. So, uh, this is Derpy Dragon. This boss is really simple. We're just He's always going to move left, um, and we're just going to keep stabbing him. Again, the rhythm here is going to be important. And, you know, here, I'll demonstrate that. Here, watch this. So, I'm just going to mash sword when I'm when I'm up at it. See how there's all those pauses in between the hits? And see how I see how I even got away there? It's not the best way to do it. The 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 timing is just something you have to practice. And once you get the rhythm down, it's pretty easy and you can be very consistent with it. But it is going to require practice. He requires 17 hits to kill. So there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, and 17. Okay. Now, generally what you want to do, and you kind of saw me... <clears throat> um, uh, this, it's kind of like a, like, a little, like a little spin move that I do. And basically what, what it's allowing me to do is it's allowing me to move laterally while still facing the same direction. So you kind of see, and you, you, here, I tell you what, watch, um, you, you see here the up, down, left, right, as I'm, as I'm moving there, watch, watch those movements. You're going to see, uh, you're going to see down, left, up, down, left, up, down, left, up. You're going to see, like, it's like little half circles on the controller there that's going to, uh, keep me in the, in the right position to move left with him as he does. So, what, so keep an eye on that as I do it. Oops, got out of range there. Now we can do it back the other way. So I kind of just, I kind of just slide over with them, just like that, just like that. Learn, learn how to do that as well. That's going to be very important for a couple other bosses, or a couple other fights, I should say. The f once you have this armor, you're going to tank probably two hits here. Once you have this, or maybe even three, once you have this armor, it's only going to do one damage to you, so you should be safe. Alright, so once we got him killed, we can come in here. 
get the medallion. It's going to whisk us away. Oh, so for those of you... Um, when it comes to creating splits... Um, I have a split after every crypt, and where I typically split is... So, and I tell you what, I'll, I'll demonstrate, I'll fight him one more time. And I'll show you where I, where I do it. Alright, so. You walk in, you gotta clear this text box. Crystal get, I will split when it fades to black right there. That's where I will typically split. All right, so again, full segment, clear one text box, now mash with two. And it's gonna clear the rest of the conversation. Now, now that I've acquired the second, uh, well, I've acquired both of the medallions in a particular sphere, you see a new staircase opens up. We're not gonna exit south out of the temple like we did after the last crypt. Now we're gonna move into this staircase here where, um, uh, where it's gonna take us now into the subterranean sphere. So as soon as that, uh, you clear that text box, you're going to want to move left and into these stairs, okay? All right, subterranean sphere. Here we go. North. North. Those guys will always move out of your way, so you can just keep walking north. These guys, however, are a little more erratic, these blue rock-throwing guys. You're just going to have to just, just move with them and try not to get hit by those rocks that they throw. All right. Now, something else that's worth demonstrating here. My fire rod that I had been using, you saw that I was throwing out those little balls that were kind of like boomeranging back to me. Now I have eight full segments of life. The fact that they're full is very important. Now when I use my fire wand, you get kind of this... You get kind of this rolling column of fire that will move for four tiles ahead of you. Um, this is going to be, <laughs> this is going to be, um, important to keep in mind because th now this fire is going to do more damage, but, um, it also is much harder to control. So keep that in mind. Now I want to demonstrate something here. So you see, so I've got this rolling fire here when I use my wand. I take damage here. Now I've only got seven and a half segments of life. Now I'm back down to these these fireballs. So, if you have at least eight full segments of life, you're going to have the rolling columns. Otherwise, anything between four and eight, you're going to have these. Uh, you're going to have these fireballs here. Okay. All right. So, um, where did I last do my save point? I don't want to get too lost here. Anyway, so once you get up to this screen. <clears throat> you move north until you can't move north anymore, and then we go west. You're gonna have these two blue demons here. Just try and get around them. We're gonna use the fire. We're gonna use the fire wand to burn that rock column on the left, and then we're gonna go in the staircase. Talk to this guy. One, two, three text boxes to clear. Pick up this item. This is the moonbeam moss. All right. We're going to use this, especially when you're learning, we're going to use this extensively throughout the game. So, get used to it. Alright, so now now that we've got this, we're going to backtrack, go back east. Um, and we're going to be doing a lot of east, actually. Uh, we're going to do it two times. <clears throat> Three times. Before we do it a fourth time, we're going to burn this rock here on the right. Hello? Burn it? Thank you. We're gonna go in. We gotta go up. Uh, we gotta go up one screen here, and then into here. Uh, this is going to give us a second charge of medicine. Using medicine is going to refill your life to completely full. We are gonna use this. Um, we're gonna use this not only to not die, but we're also gonna use this very strategically in con conjunction with um, how the fire wand does damage. To kill bosses in very specific ways. I'll get into that when we get to it. But um, potion management is going to be very important. I'm actually going to show you where there are some extra places to pick up medicine, so that you can, um, uh, so that you can um, have some extra if you feel like you need it. All right. So again, we're going to go east. This is now four times in a row. 
Um, and now we're going to go down the staircase here on the right. You see how it's split here. We have to do that because we want to go east from here. Uh, these worms kind of suck. Good thing they didn't hit us. Uh, we're going to go east a second time. And now we're going to go south down the staircase. Uh, we're going to go south again. Uh, south around them. South yet again. And as the arrow is telling us, we're going to want to go west. All right, now. Uh, this next screen is one that I find amusing. It's another great example. Uh, it's a very glaring example of static enemy movement when you first get onto a screen. All these and Mantis guys go left every single time. That is not a product of the save state. They will always go left there. So even though you see four of them right there in the middle, you just know that you can walk by them safely. All right. Now, what you want to do on this screen is if the demons will allow you, get us over as far to the left as possible. So that way you just need to round the corner there and go west. We go north here and everything gets dark. I wonder if the Moonbeam Moss even works here. Oh, it does. Okay. So if things are tough for you to see there, um, you can use the Moonbeam Moss. The Moonbeam Moss has unlimited charges, so use it as much as you would like. All right. So now that things are lit up here, if you would like to... Um, you're going to move over here to this upper left rock, push it to the side. That's going to reveal a staircase. We're going to go in here. We're going to pick up the item in here. This is the rainbow drop. Uh, this is going to be uh, akin to like the stepladder in The Legend of Zelda. This is, uh, and you'll see, it's, you'll see it is its requirement and its use coming up pretty soon. Okay. Now we're going to come down here, go back, go left or west, north. All right. Oh, shoot. I didn't want to do that yet. I'm going to go ahead and kill you just to, so you don't mess with me here. <laughs> exactly. All right. So, um, in a couple screens here, we're going, to, uh, we're going to do a specific movement here that's going to be optimal and hopefully avoid damage. So, um, actually, no, here's what we're going to do. Let's kill this guy. And this uh, guy. Just make sure they don't mess with us here. And let's lay it down a safe state. All right. So, and in fact, let's just pause when we get to this next screen. No, 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 no. I don't want to take damage. Okay. So you see the layout of the enemies here. Now, with the blue demons and these green pig guys, their initial movement is not static. What we want to do here is we want to move... Man, I wish this would capture my pointer so that you could see this. But basically what we want to do is we want to move along the right side of, of the screen here and then immediately turn right and go east. And I tell you what, let me... Um, uh, I, okay, how do I do that then? Um, display... Hold on. Let me see if I can do this real quick. Uh, show cursor in settings. Uh, window size display. Hmm. Not seeing it. I don't want to take too much time to do this. Uh, I could set up a whiteboard with paint. I could. Uh, window. Uh, da, 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 da. Display method. Yeah. No. No. Shoot. All right. All right. Never mind. I'm not going to do it. Under your window game capture. Um, window game capture. All right. I tell you what. Um, keep giving me commands in chat and I'll, I'll, I'll do it. All right. So anyway, so here's what we're going to want to do. And ideally, it's going to look like that. Okay. If the enemies cooperate. Let's see. If, okay. So he didn't cooperate there. Good. I'm glad they'll give me different movement patterns. So he didn't cooperate there. If that's the case, if they... And let's see if I can get him to move in front of me again. Okay, so here I'm going to have to... Whoops. All right. They waited too long. But that's what you're supposed to do. Is if he moves in front of you... No, I thought he was going to do it. Shoot. Now, now I'm trying to anticipate it. I shouldn't do that.
Come on, move in front of me. Oh, come on. Stop being so cooperative. Okay, so he, here's, here's the thing. Here's the other thing. If... Uh, like what that pig guy did, he moved... Well, in, in the other case, he moved... If there's an enemy that moves over into that eastern opening there, you can you can walk up instead and then walk to the east. Because what you ideally do here is... Okay, so here we go. So I'm going to do that. So I'm going to go north, and then I'm going to go east. Whereas otherwise, you would... Oh, shoot. Now he's doing something totally different. Ah, sh I should have been paying attention. So here, you would totally move east, and then north. Okay, now, once we get to this screen here, this staircase. So, you recognize this lady. She is our, kind of our, our, um, overseer here. So what she's asking is if you would like to save your game, Okay. So, you have hi here for yes, and EA here for no. So, we're going to say hi, which is the default function here. Alrighty. So, you see you've got, uh, you've got a password there. What this question here is, is um, would you like to save your game? Now, for those of you that are doing this on emulator, you're going to have access to um, a, what was normally an add-on feature with the TurboGrafx-16 called the File Cabinet, which... Think of it kind of like a memory card. So we're going to say yes. These are your save slots. Uh, we'll just use Newtopia 1. Okay. Now, I'm doing this for... Oh, okay. I've already done this here. Now, if this is not the first time you've created a save file, it's going to ask you this question. This question is, would you like to overwrite what you already have there? We're going to say yes. Now, this question is really important. This is asking if you would like to continue your game. I'm going to go back here because I want to demonstrate something. All right, whatever. That's, the fact that I took damage there is fine for what I'm going to demonstrate. Notice I'm missing two and a half segments of life. So we're going to say, yes, we want to save our game. Do you want to use a file cabinet? Yes. We'll save it in Utopia 1. Do you want to overwrite this? Yes. Would you like to continue? I'm going to say no. What this is going to do is it's going to take me back to the title screen. I'm going to press the run button to get to here. I'm going to press the select button to get down to continue. And then I'm going to press the run button again to select it. What this question is, is would you like to enter a password or use your file cabinet? The file cabinet is the second option. So we're going to press the one button here. That's our save file, Newtopia 1. Look at my life bar. It is full. Use this to your advantage. This is a great way, if you've taken a lot of damage, going to the, um, going, you know, and typically save points are going to be right before you get to crypts, maybe just one or two screens away in most cases. So if you've taken a lot of damage right before you get to a crypt, this is a great way to not only save your progress, but then also refill your health without having to burn a potion, okay? So, um, and so now we just, um, as soon as we're done, we just walk out and we continue. From this screen, we're going to go south. Get that guy to get him out of the way. Go east. And here we go into crypt number four. All righty. So, um, you see here that there is a river totally blocking my path. I can't get through. Except for I can because we've got that lovely little... That's the, that's the result of the rainbow drop. Is it gives us this nice little rainbow bridge here. Now, what comes up next is your first example of dark rooms. So we're going to go ahead and use the Moonbeam Moss, and it's going to show you the layout. I'm going to use this extensively, and if you're following along with the notes, any room that, you know, with the direction, you know, N, W, E, S, whatever, any room that's denoted with an asterisk is a room that's dark, so you know to prepare the Moonbeam Moss if you think you need it. So here we're going to go ahead and kill these guys, get, out, get them out of the way. Want to avoid taking damage as much as possible. We're going to go north. Um, ignore those guys. We're going to go west. All right, we have to kill everyone in this room. 
Uh, ideally, we... Ooh, that, talk about ideal. Um, th for most of the enemies in here, this, uh, this, the columns of fire are going to do double the damage of your sword. Oops. Okay. See, that's a great example of touching enemies even when the hourglass is on and they can still do damage to you. All right. So what we're collecting here is the first item that... Well, actually, I guess it's the second. But anyway, this item that we're going to collect here, and I'll go ahead and do a save state here, is one that is uh, that I is not in the any percent route. We are doing this because it's 100%, but it's nice for safety too. So we're going to go west. Let's kill this guy to get him out of the way. We'll go south. We need to kill all the enemies in this room. Uh, these little blob enemies um, have this lovely function like you saw there. Once you hit them once, uh, they will lose that gel around them and then they will speed around at like twice the speed, which makes running them down lots of fun. All right. So anyway, once we've got all the enemies killed here, this block here, so it's the in the middle row, second from the right. We're going to push to open it up. Okay. Now this room, oh, this room is a doozy. So, and I'll, I'll kind of show you, I'll kind of show you the layout of the room here. So here's what we need to do. We need to get, we need to go along the bottom of the room, go up and around and get that treasure chest. But we've got these turrets here. Now, what you might notice is there's this very narrow, narrow corridor that is directly in the path of that turret that could be problematic. And it is. We're going to try to manipulate, and I'm going to show you a couple of techniques here. We're going to try to manipulate the fireballs such that we won't get hit. And the way that you do that is you come and you stand right here and you wait for the second, and you wait until about that timing there for the second fireball to shoot. We didn't get them. Now, the manip is dependent on RNG. So um, you, there's no reliable way to do this. So we're going to come here, wait for the first shot, and then about that second time, we're going to wait to see. Now, what you should see is if the manip goes well, you're going to see the second fireball is going to come out sooner and it's going to go a little higher than um, than the first one does. And we're, we're talking specifically about the bottom turret here. Okay, we're not getting it. Um, and I, I, that might be a product of the save state, which is unfortunate. But so I'm going to show you the backup strats here. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to come in. We're going to try to do the manip. We're not going to get it. Okay, we're going to go ahead and walk anyway. Now, when it comes to taking damage, you will always boost in the opposite direction that you're facing, no matter what direction the hit is coming from. You see, all those hits are coming into, you know, what would be Jazeta's right side but he's always going to bounce backwards when I'm facing down. We're going to use this to our advantage. So what we're going to do is we're going to try the manip. It's not going to work. That fireball's coming. We're going to turn around and bounce backwards. Whoops, I shouldn't have got hit by that one. I was dumb. So. Okay. Fireball's coming. Turn around. Bounce this way. This is the bronze armor. This is going to be a nice little upgrade for people starting out um, to get, uh, you know, to make uh, the next few crypts a little safer. So again, we're going to stand here, try it. Didn't get it. Turn around, bounce this way. Get the armor. Now what we want to do is we want to kind of try to weave our way around these fireballs, stand up here, wait until he shoots. Oops, not derp there. Hold on. the armor wait until he shoots one up and then and then go around him and hopefully they don't shoot another one in time like that and hit you again all right that's enough with that backtrack we're gonna go out to the east to the north to the east remember what this room looks like that uh, all right so this is our first introduction to the ghost enemies Ghost enemies can only be hit with your sword. Your fire wand will not... Damn it. I should have saved before I went in there. Hold on. Let me do this real quick one more time. Oh! No, I thought I got the manip there. Never mind. Shoot. Oh, well. Come on. 
Alright, I really don't want to waste more, much more time on this, I'm sorry. <sighs> Come on. Ooh, boy. Okay, fine, we'll just take that damage boost. That's cool. Alright. safe state there. So you cannot use your, you see your fire wand that just bounces right off of them. Has no effect. You have to kill these with your sword. Now luckily we don't have to kill the guys in here. One thing I am going to show you here, this is a, this is totally optional if you feel you need it. Um, this room here has um, has medicine in it. Go ahead. Oh hey look, that's right. So, but because I have... Now, one thing to note here. See how my medicine is purple? If it's purple, that means you can use it twice. Once you use it once, it turns green. And then once it turns green, then it disappears. So the purple indicates that we can use this twice. So I'm going to go ahead and actually... Let me kill a couple more to get these out of the way. Um, and this is something you can do as well. If you take a lot of damage coming into that, um, you know, that armor, that armor get room. Is you can go ahead and use a potion see how it's going to be green now it's going to turn purple because now i have two again um so you can use it to kind of refill um, your potion if you already have two anyway we want to go east from here uh we need to kill all of these guys here Alright, once you kill all of them, you see how the doors on the left and right open? We don't want those. We want to push this block on the left side here. It's going to open this door to the north. Okay, this is kind of in an X pattern. So we just, just want to move around these bugs and come up here. Alright, now, this next room is going to be one of the more daunting rooms of the game. You have to kill all the enemies in this room. But you notice it's going to be these four ghosts that are going to be... Um, that are going to be skirting along the edges. Now, because they move kind of erratically, you want to do as much of your fighting from the center as you can, okay? So, what you would like to do is like that. Get the ghost moving along the, um, the vertical edges of the room so that they're easier to stab. Because you notice when they move horizontally, they float up and down. This is especially problematic for the ghosts along the top because they can float into the wall above it and out of the range of your sword right there. So it can make finding them difficult. Now, even here to the side, um, when they float downwards, um, they can get out of the range of your sword when you're here. So that's I'm not going to waste any time in this room. That, that, that just takes some practice. Once you kill them all, push the block on the right. And then we move up. Okay. Um... You want to you want to go to the right here. You, we we need to bomb the top of the wall. You want to go right here, and I'll show why when I come back into this room. So we're gonna go ahead and bomb up. Turn the wand back on. Uh, notice how we have to go around to the left. Uh, if you go around to the right, you won't be able to reach. Uh, you see, there's no way to get up here. Uh, we get this item here. It is the key. And then we go back out. Okay, now, the reason why we wanted to go right um, when it comes to um, in the room before is you notice that... Oops. You notice that the redistribution of the enemies after you've killed them, it will redistribute them from left to right. So if you've already killed a bunch, coming back to the right, the enemies are not going to be in your way at all. It's going to be a lot easier to move through. Back to the room where we fought all the ghosts. you got to push the block again to go back down. Uh, now we want to move east. Just move east here. Avoid these guys. Kill them if you need to. Um, okay. Oops. Here we go. Let me light this up so you see what it looks like. Oh, that's that's one thing to note. Is that when you use the moonbeam moss, the lighting, the light up effect actually lasts for a few rooms. It's not room by room. 
So there are rooms that we've been walking through that normally would be dark, but because I've used the Moonbeam Moss in a previous room, you know, say one or two rooms before, the lighting effect will still take hold. Oops, no. Let's keep it on here. All right, so we want to move up and around that tentacle there and then um, and then up to here. All righty. Um, these enemies are much more easily killed with your sword. So, and I'm actually glad that I took damage there. So let's, let's demonstrate on this top guy here. Whoops, oh God. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five hits to kill him. Whereas on these guys down here, it's just one, two, three with the sword. It does cover multiple rooms, yes. So, um, because they don't shoot anything and they and they don't move too fast, um, you want to you want to try and kill them with your sword. Okay, here comes the boss. Another fantastic example of the importance of walking in on the right tile. We want to walk in on the left hand tile. What's coming up here is my boy, Stunlock Earwig. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do this fight, and I'm going to demonstrate how it is that this is working. Walk straight up, stab as soon as you get to him, hopefully you don't take damage, pin him all the way up against the wall, and just keep hitting him. The rhythm with your sword here is so important. Let's do it again. So, let me show you what this boss would normally look like casually. You see, it's this big, long, kind of centipede looking thing that just chases you around. Now, the only segment of this boss that takes damage is that tail segment that's got those two little, the two little spines coming out of the back. So you would need to try to curl around and hit it without getting hit by his face curl around and hit it without getting hit by its face, all these things, okay? That, this is very time consuming and you see it does, it does a pretty decent amount of damage to you. Now, okay, so that does damage to him, but watch. I can hit any segment of its body and knock them back, but I'm not doing any damage to it this way. It's still gonna take the hit stun. So what we do is by walking in on the left hand tile and walking straight up, it's, and, and you, you saw, oh, and I'll show you here. You see, it always is always going to chase me down. It's always going to hunt for my current position. So if we walk straight up, it's going to come straight down at me. And as long as we stay in that same column, it's never going to deviate from its path. So what we do is, like I said before, remember how I said that um, the sword is very effective at hitting multiple enemies that are stacked on top of one another? That's exactly what we're doing here. We're bouncing all of its segments against the wall, including its tail, which is taking damage. And that's how we kill that boss very easily, okay? So never deviate from this column that you're in right here. Just pin it against the wall, keep stabbing, keep stabbing, keep stabbing, keep stabbing, keep stabbing, keep stabbing, and then it will die eventually. Now, one thing to note that you can escape this room a little quicker. As soon as you see one of those explosions, the boss, the whole boss is going to die. Get on out. And here's how you get out. So we're going to pin him against the wall. He's dead. Okay, cool. We're going to go this way. Notice I moved down and then to the left. Or down and to the right, excuse me. If you move right first, his head can still come out and hit you. And of course, if you move in right, you're going to bounce to the left which is the opposite of where you want to go. So you move down a little bit and then to the right as soon as you see those explosions going and it'll get you over to that door quicker so you're not wasting so much time before it opens. All right, so door's now open. Cool. Here we go. Do, 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 do. Walking around and around. Picking up the medallion. Hooray. And split. All right, and like we did before, life gets filled, mash with two after you clear that box, and you can move on. Back into the same sphere that we were before, except now we're going to start out by moving left, or west, I should say, whoops. 
This room can kind of be complicated. These guys will get in your way. Uh, we want to move south here. I like to enter on the leftmost tile because we need to kill these two enemies here. But that way it just puts me right next to him. So I can kill him. Kill him too. Um, if you feel you need it, you can light up this area. Once you kill those two guys, push the block on the right. Uh, and we walk in here. We talk to this guy. I think it's just two text boxes. Fl screen flashes. And what he does is he increases your bomb capacity to, uh, to 12. And he also refills your bombs. Now, this is not required. This is not in my route for any percent. Uh, this we are only doing for 100%. Um, there is a bomb upgrade that we are going to get later. The next one we would get is the one you would normally get for any percent. But um, uh, this is actually nice because you need five bombs for the next crypt. So this is basically going to guarantee that we have all the bombs that we need. All right, so we go north, 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 and north. Now, right here, um, so on this... So, the, so the, the rock that's directly above me that I'm facing, the, the crystalline rock. What we're going to do here is we are going to... Um, oops, no, hello. Okay, we're going to hit this with fire. It's going to burn, and we're going to walk through. This saves us from having to do a whole big old dipsy-doo where we would normally go around like that. Instead, we can just burn this rock, go up, and straight through. Okay. Um, right here is another save point, if you feel like you would like to use it. So, here's what we're going to do. Because I've only lost half a segment of life, I don't need to do the whole save and reset thing. So, we're going to say yes. We're going to, um, we're going to want to use the password, so we can say yes here. Select that one, say yes. Do you want to continue your game? Yes. As soon as you come out, press 2 to clear it, and you can move on. So, let me show you what that looks like very quickly. You're basically just going to be going in, so as soon as you get in here, you're just going to mash one. So we're going to come up, say yes, 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 and then two to clear through. Okay? So if you just want to save and continue, then um, that's what that looks like. So after you do that, you go north, north, wait for a second there, and then go north again. All right, crypt number three. Bomb Central. We're going to go north. Bomb this wall here. Uh, I don't need to light this up. It's really just this narrow corridor, as the walls would suggest. Bomb up again. We're going to talk to this guy. Now, because he has something to give us, we cannot clear his text. It's three boxes. We go here. It's the bronze shield. We now go east. I'll go ahead and light up this room. Uh, that's what it looks like. Um, we don't really need to worry about the layout, because what we're going to do here is we're just going to hug this top wall. Oops, I'm going to take some damage there. That's fine. And we're going to bomb north. Go north here. Um, we are going to thank that ghost for disappearing. We're going to bomb to the west here. And we're going to bomb to the west a second time. All right, this room is interesting. So you see it's got this kind of like this porthole here, and these things are just going to keep pouring out. So moving quickly through this room is very important, because otherwise, I mean, look at this. This is madness. So instead what we're going to do is, so as soon as we walk in, we're just going to, as quickly as we can, move north, because that's where we need to go next. Uh, we're going to need to move north again. That's just going to be walking through here. Uh, we'll light this room up. We have to kill all four of these guys. I like to just go left, right, left, right, left, right. That kills those two pretty easily. Again, the hourglass is another nice way to kill them quickly as well. Once they're all dead, bottom uh, bottom row of blocks, second from the left. We want to push that one. And then we go east. Um, you can use the rainbow drop to save a little time here and just walk right up to that chest. Grab the key. You do still have to push the block in order to open the door, though. So you can just push that out and then go back the way you came from. Got to push the second block again, Again, bottom row, uh, second from left, and then we just walk out, we backtrack. Again, remember these guys are going to be pouring out of this place here. We just want to go as quickly as we can, now to the west. Alright. Last room here before the boss. Um, 
you go ahead and use the fire to kill the um, to kill the little blob things here. Um, and then you got to use the sword to kill uh, the um, the ghost. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and lay down a save state here. This boss, we want to do a very particular movement manipulation to make this a lot easier. Notice I'm standing in the center of the two tiles. This is important, all right? I'm going to go ahead... You know what? I'm just going to go ahead and do the boss fight, and then I'm obviously going to do it again a couple times, and I'll explain what's going on here. So here we go. That did not go as planned. I want to show you what this is supposed to look like. Okay, so. This is what we call the Dagger Twins. We focus on the one on the right first, and the way that we manipulate him to move back when he initially, to move up when he initially comes in is like this. Come in on the center tile, move to the right of that little cross tile at the bottom, and then straight up. We want to stand right about, oh God. So, so again here. So, see, this, this little cross tile that I'm kind of standing on right there? Um, we want to uh, we want to come one tile to the right of it and then move. Okay? So, we come to the right of it, move straight up, and then we want to stand right about here and just keep bouncing him off the wall. Again, the rhythm here is very important. 11 hits kills him. Okay? Now, if you take a hit from one of the daggers and get knocked back a little bit, especially if you have a good amount of life, that's not a big deal. But here's the importance. I want you to pay attention now to the other twin. This is why where we're positioned is... Oh, my God. See? I, I moved... Did you see how I moved too far? And now he's not moving straight back? He See how he moved a little bit to the left? This is why your positioning is that important. Now, I want to position here. Watch the other guy. He's going to throw daggers. If I'm standing right there in the right place... That dagger is going to go sailing behind me and not hit me and knock me out of my position. So if you're standing... So, like, and I'll, I'll demonstrate. If you're standing too far back trying to be safe, you know, I'm going to stand back here. Well, first of all, that guy's going to clip me on the way by. But let's say I'm standing, like, right about, I don't know, here. Whoops, he clipped me again. Am I safe there? I think I am. Nah. I would have been safe anyway. Anyway, so <coughs> just to make sure that you don't get hit, you got to be standing right about here. And that dagger, when it gets thrown out, will just go sailing right by you. Okay, so count the hits. You got to count 11 because then as soon as you hit him, as soon as you kill that one on the right, you got to turn around and focus on the other guy who should be right to your right. Okay. So we're going to come up here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. All right. So now it's just a matter of just moving along with this guy and just, just going with, with his flow. Notice now I'm kind of doing those little those little circle steps, but instead of doing it facing up, I'm doing it facing right. And that allows me saw he was kind of creeping up, and I was doing those circle steps to kind of to kind of keep with him so that I'm still facing him, but I'm moving up as he's moving up. So that way I can keep bouncing him against the wall and kill him easily. That one you just kind of have to get the feel for. There's going to be some RNG with the second guy's movement. I'm not going to sit here and keep doing that. Um, but, uh, but you just kind of have to get a read on him as he's moving. All right, so we now have our fourth medallion. That's both of those in the, um, that's both of those in the 
subterranean sphere. We now have this staircase on the right. This is going to take us to the sea sphere. Things are going to get a whole lot of interesting over here. All right, so we start out by going east, north, west. Now, we are going to burn. Well, we're going to take damage, apparently, which actually isn't a big deal. So you see this, um, you see these blocks down here. We're going to burn the one that's directly above the one at the very edge here. So that's that's your place marker is, is this one here we're going to burn up. And we're going to come in here and we're going to talk to this guy. He is going to uh, give us another segment of life and also refill it. So if you take a little damage there, that's fine. Now, one thing to note, as soon as you come out of this room... Um, the fish guy is going to be right to your left and is going to be moving right. So we're going to come out and we are going to immediately stab to the left one, two, three times to get him out of the way. Otherwise, he is going to do damage to you and knock you back. So, um, and in fact, I think... Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. Hold on. I want to see if he cooperates here. He can knock you back into the staircase and waste a whole bunch of your time. So, that's why when you come out here, immediately we want to turn around and stab that way. And then go west here, north here, east here, uh, that, uh, that rock in the middle of the screen. We're going to burn it and go into it, talk to this guy. Uh, he is going to uh, refill and give me another four bombs for my capacity. Cool. Out we go. West. North. East. North. West. Use our rainbow drop here. West again. Now we need to kill both the enemies on this screen. So I'd like to get right here. Throw a couple diagonally get him. Once this guy pops up, we're going to throw a couple fireballs at him. Kill him there. Make this staircase appear. Walk in. Uh, enter the fireplace. Talk to this guy. One. Two. Three and four text boxes. Come on over here. Pick up the falcon shoes and it's going to, you see the effect immediately, is going to double our walking speed. Now we are power walking. We're going to power walk our way to the west. And then south. West. North. West. South. West on the left side. Oh, I'm sorry, south on the left side. South again. West. North, and we're going to go in here. Safe point. Alrighty. Now that we've done that, let's just get these guys out of the way and go north. North again. Into the crypt. Okay. This crypt is a doozy, so um, so stay with me here, folks. All right. First thing we're going to do is go north and get introduced to these jackasses here. These are our wizards. We're going to light up this room. So here's the problem with these wizards. They're going to shoot out these kind of like blue-looking arrow fireballs. They're only going to shoot them whenever they're in either your, you know, your... Uh, when they're matched up with either your Y or your X axis. So you see, as soon as he comes, we're in the same um, X axis there. So he's going to he's gonna shoot me there. Y axis there, he's going to shoot at me there. Here's the problem. I'm going to try to throw fire at him. His fireballs not only stop mine, but go right through them. You cannot stand there and go toe-to-toe -to -toe with these guys. You just can't. And it, even if I try to do it with my sword... See, here we go. 
you know, I mean, I can try and mash with them, but look, I've just lost all my life. We're not about that life. What we are about is playing this, is playing this smartly. Now, because I have at least eight segments of life, I've got this, I've got this nice rolling column of fire. Now, you see that just like Jazeta, it is, uh, it, it, it is two tiles in in size so is its hurt box we are going to use this very much to our advantage so this is a nice little trick when it comes to defeating this guy what you want to do is you want to get on the same y-axis as him you're going to coerce a fireball move a tile down see okay so we're going to come down again see how he's moving towards me but I'm a tile below him so that he's not throwing a fireball at me. But I can throw out my fire and it's coming up high enough to hit him as he's coming at me. But he's not hitting me with this fireball. So, that's a nice little technique for killing them. Okay. To, to the west here, we can go ahead and block those shots. Um, if, these, uh, if these slugs get in your way, hit them with a couple fires, move west again. Okay, now, these kind of... Um, and I'll go ahead and put a save state here. These kind of little zombie armadillo things or whatever, um, they are not affected by fire. As you can... Uh, come on, come at me. As you can see here, not taking any damage. You have to hit them with your sword. Uh, these things can be very annoying to deal with. When you're coming into this room, if one of them happens to get in your way, go ahead and kill it with four stabs of the sword, so that way it won't be back when we backtrack back into this room. But what we're going to do here is we're going to bomb north. This room would normally be dark. You might need to light it up. This introduces us to these wisp enemies too. These black floating things. They will always move diagonally, but they will change direction um, at a whim. They do not have any kind of set pattern other than just diagonal movement. Uh, so uh, when you can at all help it, hit them with fire to keep a safe distance so that they don't, you know, unexpectedly turn into you and, and hit you. So we're going to go ahead and kill all of them. Alright. Now you see how there's kind of four blocks on the diagonal there. We're going to go to this one here on the top left. And you can push it You can push it either right or down. It doesn't matter. Um, you come in here and you get the key. Now we're going to backtrack into here. Okay, let's light this up so you see what's going on. Pretty simple layout, but you do need to push one of those blocks. So it's nice to be able to see where it's at. What you want to try and do is you want to try and get to the side of these enemies. Do not try to fight them from above. Um, because the way that they move up and down is erratic enough that um, uh, it can cause you problems. So try and bounce them to the sides. Once you kill all of them, the block on the left, we push it, and we go out this way. Alright. Back the way we came. We can block those shots because we have the bronze shield. Um, now we move up. Where we move north. He doesn't give us anything. We clear his text boxes. Alright. We're going to bomb to the right. We're bomb to the east. Let's light this up so you can see what it looks like. The way that you're going to move through this room is you're just going to take the... Is you're just going to take your rainbow drop. You're going to just move across here. In fact, I'm going to kill everything in this room. Just so I can lay down a, a save state. Or at least... You don't normally need to do this. All right, so let me show you what's waiting for you in this next room here. Four of these wizards. When you're first starting out, trying to do this on your own is utterly terrifying, all right? This can be a fantastic way to take a ton of damage, eat through your potions, and rip your runs. We don't want that. So in order to not deal with it, this is where our our friend the magic ring comes in. Now you saw what it looked like in that room with all those wizards. I want you to see what it looks like when you use the magic ring. So, now you see him, use it, and now you don't. What the magic ring does, it's a single use item, and what it will do is any quote unquote large enemies that you encounter, it's going to turn them into smaller enemies like these very docile transparent slugs, okay? So, we need to kill all the enemies in this room in order to progress. If you have a ring, use it here immediately to make it a lot easier.
Let's see if the slugs feel like cooperating. Let's see if they feel like being homies. They don't. I kind of want to... So, again, we'll demonstrate the power of the ring. As soon as you walk in the room, use it. If, if you wait too late, they can already start to throw out those fireballs. And if they've done that, those fireballs are still going to come out and can potentially hit you. So as soon as you use the ring, go ahead and switch to your fire wand. Kill everything in here much more easily and safely. That's the key part. Alright. With everything dead, we can now move north. Just move around these guys. We don't need what's in that treasure chest. Alright. If you don't absolutely have to kill these guys, then don't. But it, just to be safe, it might be a better idea just to clear them out of your way. We're going to go in the staircase. Uh, this room, I mean, I'll light it up, but you see here it's not complicated. You just move from right to left, and then we come into here. I'm going to turn on the fire one, and we're going to go ahead and just kill these. I, I typically like to kill these guys, um, especially coming through here, because they just... It's a guessing game as to where they're going to jump, so I like to just pin them against the wall, kill them to make it nice and safe. Walk straight up through the center of this room and into here. All right, now these these enemies can be a little tricky. Um, they kind of just do this little bouncing pattern, which when they're moving up and down, is not a big deal when you're fighting them from underneath or above. But you're moving from left to right, especially if you're trying to hit them with your sword, um, that bouncing pattern can cause them to go over the fire, like, like you just saw there. You see how it went over my fireball? Just did it there, too. So just be just be mindful of that um, when uh, when you're fighting them. Once you clear them out, block on the right, we push it, and up we go. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do here, because I don't have a ring, and I want another one, and I want it soon, I'm going to go ahead and kill these slugs, because they are notorious for dropping them. So let's see if I get... A slug homie to help me out here. I don't. Darn it. Oh, oh shoot. I let, let me light up this room. Um, just two blocks in the middle. Um, you don't need to push them, but I guess it's kind of good to know that they're there. Uh, you just need to kill all the enemies in the room to make that door on the right open, and we will walk through it as soon as it does. All right, I'm actually going to lay down a safe state here. Let's see if I can get a ring from one of these guys. Come on, somebody help me out here. Okay, never mind. All right, so you're going to... So you're not always going to have a ring um, when you need it. And this is one of those examples. No homies, Scala, I know. So what we want to do when we get in this room is you don't need to kill all of the, all of those enemies. We're going to bomb to the south, okay? And we are definitely going to lay down a safe state here. Let's do this. Okay, it's already lit up. So, here's what we're... Oh, shoot. Never mind. Dang it. I, walking in and out caused it to... Uh, well, I'm just going to use this here. So, I'm going to go ahead and pause this so we can demonstrate... Here's what we're looking at. We're looking at these four wizards and we do not have access to the center of the room. We are confined to the edges. Fighting this room casually is a nightmare. I will do my best to demonstrate how you should do this properly, okay? I will try. It is not easy for anyone. See, you you get you get kind of into that you get kind of into that um um, that wash there. So what I like to do is, okay, so I've got this guy. I had that guy automatically shooting. Now, when they're frozen while they're shooting, you definitely want to take advantage of that. So what I want to try and do, bait out a shot. Oh, shoot. He's too low. Darn it. Ah, see, this is, this is really tough to demonstrate. This might be a place where you have to use potions. And if you can, that's fine, because we're going to get another one pretty soon. But when you can, just try to, um... Yeah, see, I'm probably gonna die here. Yeah, I did. Alright. 
So, see how dangerous this can be. Don't let this daunt you. You can just slog through this room, use a potion if you need to, and then get another one right back. Alright, so here he's gonna... So I'm gonna try and shoot diagonally. Um, so that I'm out of his axis. If you get too low on life, um, you have to resort to using your sword. Alright, I tell you what, let's just do this. Oh, good. I've got two of them pinned in there. There it's worth it to just tank damage and just hit him with your sword. So here we go. Hit him diagonally. Get out of the way. Go ahead and hit him. Let them float on over. Shoot diagonally so that you're doing damage to him before they get to you. And kind of try and play it safe there. That's going to hit me. Come on over. Come on over. If you need to be patient, I mean, again, you can't go toe-to-toe -to -toe with these guys. So if you got to be patient with them like this, go ahead and do it. Okay. Bait out a shot. Just keep hitting them diagonally. Like that. Okay. So, um, once you once you kill them all, this, uh, this bottom most block here on the right, push it to the side. Do not push it up. And collect the strongest armor. back out um, and now we are going to go east this room is kind of tough so what you want so ideally what you want to do is you want to is you want to um, you want to so each of these little diamond tiles that you see here once I step on those you see those those holes across the, the top of the room they're gonna shoot out arrows like so oh th there's a in the sides of the room too so, ideally, the way that you want to come through this room is you want to um, is you want to step on this tile and immediately turn up to block the shot. Now, it's not always going to come out. You see, you can walk across a couple of them, and it won't always shoot out arrows, and it won't always shoot them out from... Oh, shoot. Oh, great. I, dang it. That was dumb. Well, I get to do this fight again. Yay. Okay. Come on. Come over here. Let me hit you diagonally. Oh, you cowards. You cowards. Get over here. There we go. Diagonally, if you can. Get out of the way. Diagonal. Stop it. Diagonal. Ooh, nice. Cherry. Okay. Come on over. No. Oops. Okay. <gasps> Don't push it up. If you do, you can always push that one. <laughs> yeah, they are a pain solo, indeed. Um, there's going to be a room later on where we're going to fight just two of them. <clears throat> but we are going to fight them straight up. Anyway, alright. So I tell you what. Now that I'm done with that. Let's lay down a safe state. So ideally, you want to walk here. Turn up to block it. Move through. Block that one. And then move through. Um, here, you just want to take a damage boost through this guy. It's the easiest way to get through that room quickly. Uh, let's light this up. And let's kill everything in here. Yeah. Okay. So, I tell you what, and I'll, this will further demonstrate it. So I have less than four segments of life. So you, now you see how my fireballs are just fizzling out. They're not even doing that, that thing that's coming back. This is especially problematic because now they're doing even less damage. So now I'm resorting to fighting them with my sword, which I don't like to do. But in this case... Okay, now normally what you do when you clear this room is uh, the, all the way on the right here, the one on the bottom. We want to push that, make that staircase appear. But... We're going to demonstrate a little safety here. We're going to bomb east. Bomb east twice. And this treasure chest contains a potion. Let's go ahead and kill these enemies just to make it a little safer. I'm going to go ahead and use this to fill up. And then potion is green. Now it's purple again. Now we've got that. We can come back. Uh, oh, whoops dark. Light it up. That's the way we want to go. I want to move down 
here. Let's turn on our fire. All right, so we got to fight two of these guys, but at least it's open, which makes it a lot easier. So you can just kind of walk by him, make him shoot the fire, hit him diagonally. Walk by him, made him shoot, hit him diagonally. Or, like I was showing you before, if I'm not taking all this damage, is you can use that technique where you, where you, shoot, I got the one below me. Bait out a shot, get a tile below, and then just, and then just hit him with the columns like that. Okay. Alright, I'll tell you what, let's do that again, but better, because I'd like to have more life going into this next boss. The, um, the, the red fireballs make this a little more problematic, too. Um, just, oh geez, just like the, um, just like the wizard shots, um, those red fireballs will block your fire shots as well. So, uh, that can make that kind of a pain. Oh, you sneaky wizard. Okay, here we go. Alrighty, so, this next boss here, this is Poverty Trinex. I'm, I mean, this is... This is quite an interesting fight. It's easily going to be the longest one of the game. And there is no set... All the other enemies that I've shown you are like set patterns. You know, where, where different manipulations and things that you do. No such no such case here. So the way that this boss works, and I kind of just let him do his thing for a bit so you can see. So the shell is going to move in a certain direction. It's going to stop. And then when it starts moving again, it's going to move towards the direction that I'm at at the time it starts moving. So you see I'm standing right here. Now it's moving towards me. Watch. I'm going to stand above it. It's going to stop moving. And then it's going to walk straight up to where I was. Ideally, what you want to do here... Oh, first of all, hitting it with your sword is going to do the maximum amount of damage. So we want to try to... So we're going to hit its heads... Um, you can pop them right off the body uh, when they're attached to it, or sometimes they'll float at you on their own. Here's what you would like to be able to do if possible. And we can kind of do it here. Not really, because they didn't cooperate there. But here's the ideal situation you want to try to find yourself in. You've got this, you've got them moving horizontally. You can just bounce them, you can just continually bounce them off the wall and do mass amounts of damage at once. Now, the best way to do this, if you can swing it, is to get it when they're trying to return to the body. Here we go. And just like this. Oh, shoot. Had it. See, it's trying to return to the body, but I'm not letting it because I keep hitting it into the wall. So that's going to be the best way to kill it most efficiently. Here we got, we got the same thing again. It's going to try to return to the body, but I'm standing in between it and the body and just bouncing it against the wall and killing it. Uh, there's not much more to say about that boss. Um, it takes a lot of practice to do it well. Um, I'm going to go ahead. And, you don't have to kill these slugs. I'm still just trying to see if I can hopefully get a ring, and I did. Thank you, slug homie, at the last moment. Get the medallion and move on. Alright, five medallions down, three to go. Remember, two to clear that box. Back into the sea sphere we go. All right, now, we've reached a crucial point in this game where we now have 12 segments of life, especially 12 full segments of life. This is what your fire looks like now. You notice it moves much faster, much further, and it even has this nice little brrr, flourish at the end. This is what we will be referring to from here on out as the good fire. The good fire is extremely important for a lot of parts of the rest of this run. Um, the next of which is going to be the walk to and into the next crypt. So, once we come out east, now south, west. Throw some fire at this crab just to make sure he doesn't hit me. West again. North. West. West a second time. Now. Want to move? Oh, you know what? I should shoot. Hold on. Let me let me lay down a safe state here, because I want to show you how the ideal way to do this next screen. You want to enter this screen um as as far to the bottom as you can. Now I'm gonna walk in. I'm going to hesitate and then move up and then left. the The way that they do their circles is static. So 
hesitate up left, and you see the second one is just barely gonna miss me. Whereas if I charge, if I try to just charge through, oh wait a minute, oh, I always hesitate there. Hey, I just learned something. I guess you can just bomb on through. Nice. Okay, cool. Well, that's the movement pattern though. Enter on the bottom, up left. Because if you try to just come in directly here, you're gonna go run right into that guy. And even if you come here and hesitate and then try to move, you're gonna run right into that guy. So, oh, what? Okay, good. <laughs> All right, so here we go. Up, left. Third rock from the left side here. We wanna burn it and go through to south. Uh, south again. Clear out these enemies as you need to. You wanna try and keep this good fire as long as you can. And if you get hit even once, it is gone. So, if you need to clear out enemies to make this a little safer, by all means, please do it. <laughs> exactly. Well, hey, I tell you what, and, and let me and let me tell you something here. When it came to me learning this game and everything, I didn't have a tutorial like this. I didn't have notes like I'm providing here. This was all. Uh, stuff that I figured out on my own so but I want to try and pass along as much knowledge as possible so um, so that y'all can be good at this should you choose to do it all right now this next screen here what you want to do throw out fire immediately switch to bomb plant it go back to fire and just hold this guy at bay so that you can walk in safely without getting hit uh, we pick up the fire shield and then we leave, move left, burn him so that he doesn't kill you, da da da, da da da, like this, north, stay away from me, okay, north again, burn the same rock we used to get in here, and then move up, um, whoa! West. Okay. So you see how there's these three kind of columns of bricks. The one in the middle, you burn the tip and you can walk in. What this guy will do is he's going to give you a thousand gold. What I'm doing here is totally optional. But if you feel like getting some extreme safety, um, I'll show you what you can do with that thousand gold. West, north. You do not want to get hit by these guys, because if you do, you're going to lose, the, assuming you still have the good fire, you're going to lose it for this next room. Um, and it's nice to have it. So we're going to bomb our way in. Now watch, watch how I dispense quickly of this wizard here with the good fire. Notice how my shot went through his there? That's one of the many great reasons why the good fire is so important. Very damaging, moves quicker, and can go through those shots like that. Kill all the enemies in this room. We go up. We go up again. We talk to this guy. Um, this guy actually does give us something. He gives us access to crypt number five. Four, five six and seven text boxes to clear. After you do that, push the block on the right, walk out. So this is what I like to call the micro crypt. You have to talk to that guy in order to get access into crypt five. This is the only crypt that has such a thing. I don't know why it is, but it is, and you need to uh, you need to do it. So then we come out, we go south, we go south again, east, South. South. Okay, now. The way to the crypt is to the west. But what I'm going to show you here is going to be some optional safety uh, to the east. First thing here is this, um, is this cave in here. This is a save point. And again, we just, if you just want to save and continue, as soon as you get in there, you're just going to mash the one button. Now we're going to come north here. 
and we got a couple different things that we can do. Oh, shoot. I don't like where that guy is. Burn and die. Thank you. So we can, bom oh, we can bomb our way into here. That's annoying. And we can use our 400 gold uh, to buy potions. You can even buy two. Uh, depending on if you need one or two, um, you can buy those. Um, and then this one over here... Let's just get some fire to get these guys out of the way. Um, you can bomb in here. And uh, and this guy will sell you a magic ring for 250 gold. Um, we, already, we already have one, so we don't need it. But this is where you would buy it. Okay. Cool. So now that you've seen where those are, we can go back... Okay, now this is the screen that we originally came to from the north. Um, if you don't feel like doing any of that safety at all, you would just go west here. Um, and then you would go north, um, up these stairs, and now into the crypt. Alrighty, so we are going to start out by going west. Ah, okay. So, um, the easiest way. Th so you see all of these. Uh, you see all of these lighter colored blocks that shoot out the daggers. The easiest way to go through this room. Well, this guy's now getting in the way. So whatever. The easiest way to go through this room is as soon as you enter it, you go up. You go to the right. Um, you get one tile to the left of that sword thing, just like that. Hesitate for about like. Not even a second, and then you can walk safely by it. So, I'll show you what that looks like again. So, come into the room, you go up, left, wait, go. Okay. North, you can just go ahead and avoid these guys. Uh, north again. Ah, now, is he going to reach me up there? Ooh, he might. Okay. So, I tell you what. This... Okay, he won't reach me there. Okay, so this next room, want to enter in on the right-hand tile. I'm assuming you still have the good fire. There's a really easy way to take care of the wizard that's in this next room. As soon as you walk in, throw out a fire and then move to the right, and he'll he'll just die from it every time. Because he's either going to move down or he's going to shoot at you, and if he does either of those things, um, then that fire that you throw straight up is going to take him out and just make your life a lot easier. Uh, push the block on the left, move, open the doors, go north. Uh, this room looks like this. You just walk around the edge and um, up to here. Oops, no, here, let's come down. Okay, so, uh, again, tiles here that shoot out arrows. The way, well, let's turn on bombs because that's what we're going to need next. Uh, the way that you deal with this is you're just going to come, hug this bottom part, go to the right. You can block that, block that. And then just go up here like that. I'll demonstrate that again. In fact, I think if you do it quick enough, the the bottom one doesn't even get to you. Actually, neither of them get to you. Just move like that. There you go. Just like that. Okay. Drop a bomb on this wall. Move through it. This guy gives us nothing, so we don't care what he has to say. Drop a bomb here. Move east again. All right, north. Okay, good. Okay, get me there. All right, uh, we definitely want to have our fire on here, so let's go ahead and do that. Oh, hey, thanks. All right, so this next room, I'll kind of show you. Whoa, whoops. Okay, never mind. Um, well, I tell you what, you go away. Cool. All right, that's better. All right, so I, I already used the moonbeam moss, and now we're going to do this here. But you see what we're contending with in this next room here. That's the layout of enemies. Um, this is one of the few rooms where you have to destroy eight enemies in order to 
in order to proceed through it. Now, what's especially problematic is going to be the uh, those zombie armadillos on the bottom. But the nice thing about Newtopia is that when it comes to enemy placement, not only their locations, but the types in each locations, it is the exact same every time you walk into a room. So you know every time you walk into the room, this is going to be the layout. So for that reason, what we are going to do is we are going to walk in and we are going to immediately go, go up and start throwing fire to the left. And the reason why we do this is because we know that even with the best fire, these, these little zombie armadillo guys, they're not taking any damage from them. But the enemies on the top side will. So we want to clear them out first and then we can focus on just stabbing these guys one, two, three, four times with our sword and killing them. One, two, three, four. And he's done. All right. Move up. Oops. That sucked. Actually, you know what? No. Let's see if we can save the good fire. So what you see here, we just move up. Now, the nice thing is, is if you have the good fire, your um, your shots will go through the dogs. They won't... Or the, the little zombie guys. They won't get stopped by them. Um, they'll, it just doesn't affect them at all. One, two, three... Four. So let's see here. We would probably want to enter this room on the right hand tile and then just throw fire straight up to get that guy out of the way. We come here, we get the bronze sword. Now, the fire shield is going to block these red shots. So you can use that to your advantage to get through rooms like this safely. Okay, so here we go. Now we're going to go back to the east, uh, backtrack into this room here. Oh, this room's dark. Light it up. Pretty simple layout, though. Um, and luckily, everything in here takes damage from this fire. Now, you can have up to three fire shots on the screen at a time. Do not spam multiple ones in the same location. That will not do you any good. So you see, like I did there, I kind of... So I kind of created... You know, that covers a lot more space to kind of put it out in that wave like that. So try to do that as much as you can when you're fighting multiple enemies. Once you clear them out, bottom right block, give it a push, go up. Uh, throw some fire into there to kill those two guys so that you can come all the way on this top row here, the block all the way on the right, push it to the side, open the chest, get the key, come back out. Just like we did coming into the room, uh, we got to push this block again to get out of it. Just keep moving south. If you... If you keep walking when you get into that room there with that tentacle guy, um, it it will never reach you. Pass this. All right, now we're back into this. We're back into this room again. Okay, really simple to get through here. Now watch this. This is actually pretty cool. You'll just move up one tile and just walk to the left. And even though that, oh shoot, let's see if I can. Let's see if I can go. Yeah. Okay. Cool. It, it even did it the coming back. Even though I'm not facing up, the, oh, hello, what? Why did it do that? Even though I'm not facing up, it hits my shield at just the right time that I block it anyway. So that's all you got to do in that room. Don't overthink it. Bomb to the west. In we go. If you do not have full life at this point, you are going to want to use a potion because uh, it is extremely important for this next boss. We're going to lay down a safe state there. Okay. So in we go. Say hello to the crab boss. Immediately we're going to move to the left and all the way up. Now, and this positioning is important. Immediately move to the left. All the way up. One tile from the top. We want to keep a tile between us and the top of the room. So the boss is always going to do this. It's going to slowly meander down and then slowly meander up. Once it gets to the top... It's going to move either left or right. It's moving left. Okay. Let's see if it does it again. Whichever dis direction it decides to go when it gets to the top, it's going to take 10 steps. And at that point, it's going to open its mouth and then we can do damage. Okay. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Once, so once you have enough space, once you have enough space to get to the side of it without its 
you know, without actually touching the boss, you're going to want to get in there, turn to the right, and start throwing fire. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So on its ninth step, you're going to have room. Um, you're going to have room to get in there. Whoops. So here we go. Oh, oh, shoot. Now it's... Oh, dang it. I was anticipating it go left. All right. So hopefully it goes right again. I can show you what that looks like. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Throw fire. So you're going to hit it twice. Come on down. One, two, three, four, five, six steps the second time around. On about... And you saw on about like step three or four is where you want to um is where you want to start throwing fire again so let's see here one two oh, okay here we go so this is what this should look like if he moves to the right and we one cycled him perfect okay so let's see if he moves right again that would be awesome Two, three. So once he gets to his third step, you want to move about. So once he gets to his third step, you want to move about two tiles to the right and then start throwing fire. One, two, three. You see how I've kind of matched them up so that it's like a very continuous flow? See, if, if I throw them all at once, they're just going to be on top of each other. And I don't really get any additional effect. But if you go one, two, three. It's going to, you're going to get that nice continuous flow of fire. Let's do this a couple more times. Now, and then I'll show you what you should not do on this boss. One, two, three, four, five, six hits and it one cycles. Okay. Now, I want to see if I can get him to go left again. That would be cool. Okay, now, he's going to shoot out these fireballs. Do not dodge them going up, because you see now he's going to come rushing at me. Now I have to move under him. Now he's going to come rushing down. Now we have to wait for him to get all the way back up to the top before... And see, I was standing on the top row. As soon as you move in front of him, or move up onto that row, he's going to do that. If you move in front of him, he's going to charge you. This is why you. This is why it, the positioning is so important. So, let's see if he moves left again. That would be great. Okay. Never mind. Ah, oh, shoot. My timing was bad on that. So, if you're gonna dodge those bubbles, just walk down. Don't get in front of the crab. Just walk down to dodge it. A nice marker that I like to use when he goes right, and I'll show you um, if he does it again. Yeah, if you don't know how he works, this fight can take a long time. So, so you see right. So if you look at the if you look at the bricks on this wall here, you see how there's the the bottom brick there. I stand on the left side of that bottom brick. Um, and again, the tile down from the top, that right there is a nice little marker that I know that I'm in the right spot. Let's say that you derp on this boss and you take damage. Let me show you how we do this if you don't have the good fire. Now let's just hit him twice. Okay, so I've taken damage. My fire now sucks. What you need to do is wait for his eyes to light up and then hit him with your sword instead. Now I did a bunch of damage to him there. But let's say you let's say you didn't have the good fire. You're hitting him with the sword, I think about 16 times. So you're looking at quite a few cycles. So you don't want to do that. One more time. 
I actually wanted the good fire for the next room here because it kind of helps. One, two, three steps. And now I'm going to start to slowly throw this out. And there's your one cycle. Move around those and then come up here. Now, you see how normally you would spiral around to get in there? But what you can do instead is if you have the good fire, you can just toss that up there, kill this guy, push this block, and then do a little shortcut. Alrighty. Six medallions down, two to go. But more importantly, that's both medallions out of the sea sphere So that sphere is done with. Which means that we can now just go in the staircase right in front of us into the sky sphere. Here we go. North. West. South. South. South again. East. If you take damage here, don't worry. And I'll I will demonstrate why very soon. East a second time. It's fine. One more time. No, I'm sorry. I go east a fourth time actually. Now we go south. And now we go east again. One. Two. Three times. And then onto the staircase. Oh, I should have mentioned probably the fire shield that we collected. Not part of the any percent route. Um, oh my god. Yeah, don't get damage boosted on the stairs, because otherwise that'll happen. Um, I feel like there's something else we collected that wasn't... Oh, the bronze sword is not part of the any percent route either. Uh, those are totally optional for you if you're doing any percent. So east one, two... Uh, and now before we go east for the third time... We're going to bomb open this little door here. Walk through the fireplace naturally. Kind of used to. Uh, this is going to give. This is a double potion. So if you have none, this is going to give you two, which is really nice. And then this here is going to refill your bombs to capacity. It's not a set number. All right. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Um, and then go east. Ouch. South. South again. Uh, there's three paths here to go south. You want to take the one on the right. Oh my goodness. Please don't die. Oh my goodness. Please don't die. <laughs> Alright. Uh, and then north here. Uh, we want to take this north path. Oh, shoot. You know what? <laughs> Save state just so I don't get messed up. We'll go west. All right. Now we're safe. Should be safe. No, we're not safe. Okay, good. Good thing I made that save state. <laughs> uh, I didn't want to use a potion because we want to use those for later. Okay. Bomb into here. This is our save point. Okay, so again, do you want to save your game? Yes. Uh, would you like to use your file cabinet? Yes. Newtopia 1. Would you like to overwrite your file? Yes. Would you like to continue? No. Press start to skip this. Select to get to continue. Run here. Uh, do you want to use a password or your file cabinet? Come down here to say file cabinet and Newtopia 1. And now all of our life is refilled and we've saved that potion very crucial to do this for safety. Now we can leave. All right. And now we can go west, south, south. We're going to, oh boy. 
Um, do your best to take no damage on the way through here. Um, go east. And then north. And then into the crypt. Okay. Here we go. So. Crypt 8. This one's interesting. You're going to want... Now, one thing to note here. Um, move left and then up in this room. Because if you move up, oops, that's not good. So, move left and then up. Um, up. Thank you. Okay, we'll light this up. Uh, you want to just throw good fire at these guys. Get them out of your way. And then move west here. Now, this room... This room is interesting. You've got these two tentacles here that will always try to move to your position. But you need to kill that spirit in order to to move on. So what I typically like to do is walk in, throw it out, and then just and then immediately come up and come into this corner here. Now, if the spirit feels like cooperating and getting right in the way of your shots, um, great. You can just kill it and move on. In fact, I kind of like to hesitate. And the reason why I like to hesitate there is it gives those t the, the tips of the tentacles a little more time to move down. It gives you some more room to move up and around them. Once you've got that spirit killed, this bottom block, push it and move to the left. Got to kill everything in this room. I usually like to throw fire at that spirit um, to get it to die. Because that moves quickly and erratically. So um, you want to kill that. All right. Now, this next room here. Um, you've got these mummies, but you've got this bat that can shoot fire at you. Get rid of the bat first. Then once you do that... Um, oops, did I... I lost good fire. Get rid of the bat, and then once you do that, then you can just shoot fire at these guys all day long, and you're good. Kill all of them. Now we're going to take the staircase. Okay. Now this next room... Um, this next room, the way that you handle it initially is very important. Is it dark? It is. Okay, never mind. Good. We're going to... So I'm going to use the uh, the Moonbeam Moss now so you can see. So what we're going to do is we're going to move up and immediately start throwing fire to the left. Because you see how they can sometimes just kind of... Oh, shit. Sorry. So they can immediately start rushing to the right. So if you can get up and, and throw in fire to the left, see, because they don't move up and down quickly, they move laterally very quickly. So if you can get and throwing fire from right to left, typically they'll just go flying right into it and you can kill them quickly. Once you do that, this door opens to the east. We're going to go ahead and do that. Immediately come down here and bomb to the south before all of these guys come pouring in. Get back to your wand, throw it down to get these guys out of the way, and then pick up a very awesome item here. This is the Bell of the Sky. We're going to use this immediately and liberally throughout the rest of the run. In fact, you can switch to it right away. Okay, lay out of this room, fine. You can see what's going on here. So what the Bell of the Sky does is any room that will require you to either push a block, kill all the enemies in it, or both in order to make either a door open or a stair appear, Ringing the bell, and it has infinite uses, ringing the bell overrides that, and it can, it's going to make getting through the rest of these crypts a breeze. So, we're going to ring the bell, walk right through. There we go. Walk in here, ring the bell, not going to kill all them. Let's light the way. Uh, you can ring the bell here, too. That's going to open the door on the right. Uh, typically, I kill all the enemies in here just to make getting through here safe. So I don't take damage. But just in case uh, I feel like avoiding that, I, I can ring the bell and just come on through. Don't need to kill... Dang it. I want to keep the good fire for demonstration purposes. Sorry. So we come back here. Uh, again, you get... Get to the left of the enemies. Alright, sorry sorry to backtrack like that, but again, immediately come down here. 
If you come down immediately, the enemy should not come down far enough that they will hit you. So you should be safe. Throw some fire down at these guys to get them out of your way. Pick up the bell of the sky. I know. Bell bless. <laughs> Ring the bell. Oh, shoot. I should light this up so you see where it is. There's the stairs. Get the bell back on. Ring it right away. Open this door. Ring it again. Open this door. Throw some fire out here and get rid of these guys. Oh boy. Okay. Oh, shoot. Let those tentacles come out a little bit so that way you can walk by them safely. I usually like to enter this room throw a fire here and here. And that does a pretty good job of clearing out everything that's in my way. Usually does. Okay. Now, remember all the swords that were in this room? We're going to go across the top side now. Because obviously we don't go across the bottom. You walk down into the stairs and out of the crypt. Switch to the bell. Walk into here. Ring the bell again immediately. It's going to open the doors. I usually like to come back to my wand here to clear out these guys so that they don't hit me. That means you too. This guy gives us nothing. So we ignore him. Bomb our way east. Oops. Oh, shoot. Here. I'm gonna... So, here's the way to... Here's the way to... Ah, da da da. Alright, never mind. Here's the way to deal with this room. And the timing here is... Is... Uh, is pretty tight. You're gonna walk up as soon as you get to these guys. Stab them both. And then that pushes them far enough out of the way that you can just walk up and by them. So stab, push them out of the way, and then walk up there. I'll do it one more time. Stab, up. All right. Now, that skeleton, and I'll just so you can kind of get a good look at him. Skeleton guy. These guys suck. They move quickly, and they change direction. Their, their, their movement pattern is very unpredictable. So having to fight them is not cool. But we actually don't need to fight this guy. You would normally have to kill him to make a staircase appear, but luckily we got this bad boy here. So we're going to come to the left. We're going to ring the bell, make those staircases appear. You take the one on the left. Okay, we're going to move through here. All right. Oh, let's light up this room. Um, not much that's really to worry about in this room. We're going to switch to bombs. Um, we're going to bomb this south wall here. Um, we're going to come in. If you'd like to, you can just throw some fire down this direction. Um, it's going to get all these guys out of the way so that you can safely come down here. Pick up the key. Um, you can throw some fire back up. Make that a little safer too. Come on out. Um, and now we're going to go to the east. Uh, we're going to bomb the south wall again in this room. Oops, actually, you know what? Let's lay down a safe state. Um, now, normally... Oh, shoot. This room is dark. Now, normally, you would need to kill all of these enemies and push that block there to make that staircase appear. But instead, we can ring the bell, wait for a safe opening, and then just walk into the stairs. Okay. Kill this guy. All right, now... In this next room is another great time to have a ring. I'll show you what the layout is. You've got all of these enemies moving around and you've got those um, you've got those statues shooting at you. This room can get very problematic very quickly. One other thing to note about the skeleton enemies, they are not affected by fire. You have to hit them with your sword. So, instead of dealing with all of that mumbo jumbo, instead, we are going to walk in. If you have a ring, immediately use it, and they become these very soft, squishy guys. And you can just throw fire at them and make this a lot easier. Um, one other thing to note, that block there on the left-hand side, um, it, does, uh, it does shoot swords out at you, so avoid it. Oops. Okay, that's actually not a big deal. Oh, shoot. I actually kind of would have liked to have picked that up. Okay. If you are not at sea... Now, even though I've taken damage... I still have the good fire, as you can see there. 
The good fire is extremely important. I mean, and I can't even understate that. I can't even overstate that, I should say. For this next boss here. Um, we are going to do a quick kill on this boss that is so important that if you miss it, it's almost worth a reset. Because trying to fight him normally is just such a pain. So here's what we're going to do. I'm actually just going to do it and then I'll explain later what's going on here. Whoops, dang it, and I, I messed it up in the beginning. Okay, so yes, the Puma Head, indeed. Um, so, fun fact, that guy that was inside, the guy in the gray armor inside the Puma Head, that was Durth. That is the final boss. Now, we're not done with the game, you're going to fight him again. But that is the actual, you know, main antagonist of the game. So here's what we do. And I'll just, I'll break this down step by step. The very first thing here is you walk onto that tile right there. And you're going to wait for a couple seconds. So you can get right here. And, and make sure that's your right, um, you know, left to right positioning. So what we're going to do is we're going to get to that tile. We're going to wait for that as soon, the very moment that head starts to move to the right is when we're going to start walking up. And you want to stop just short of where, uh, of where he would be so that he would essentially just float right from left to right, right in front of your face. Okay, so once we're in, once we're in the right position, so what we're going to do is, as soon as the head, when it's moving from left to right, as soon as it crosses over, and I'll, 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 I tell you what, I'll, well, that just doesn't matter because I'm just going to demonstrate here. As soon as it gets to that position right there, where it start, you see the two crosses on either side of the door on the top, the two little kind of like plus symbols. As soon as it starts to to um, move over the one on the left, that's when we're gonna start throwing fire. But like I, like I demonstrated before on the crab, we're not just, we're not gonna be just spamming two and just throwing out a bunch. We're gonna throw it at a very steady pattern. And I'll demonstrate the pattern here. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll demonstrate the pattern here in a second. So, we're going to come here, wait, up, one, two, three, wait for a second, one, move over, one, two, three. Very steady pattern like that. And it's a guaranteed way to get him in the right place we need to be and get him stun locked. So, stand here, wait, move now, fire now. Two, three, one, move, one, two, Three, four, five. Just keep going here until it's done. That was actually close. My timing was a little iffy on that. So again, stand here, wait, move now, fire now. Two, three, four, move over. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now the reason why, and you can probably see there, the reason why moving over is so important. Move. One, two, three, four. Is that he's going to shoot out here, and by if we have him stun locked in the right place, by the time he shoots out those fireballs, it will be a tile to the left of where I am, and I won't get hit by it. Okay, now I'm going to do it. Well, hold on, let me do it one more time. You can see it fluid. Full tile to the left. If you move a half tile, you're getting hit by that shot from it. Nice, steady. And you can you can see where the twos were popping up on the side. Now, let me show you what happens if you mess this up. Like, let's say I'm just going to go ahead and spam fire. And then try and move over. And whoops, or maybe just get hit by it and just do this. Okay, now he closes the head. Now he's floating around the room. And we got to try and chase him down. Good luck trying to get him in a reliable place where you can hit him. 
Not getting the quick kill on this boss is just a horrible place to find yourself. Because look at this. Like, like, what am I supposed to do here? You know, as soon as he opens up and I hit him, he's shooting in eight directions. Like, this is, this is a bad place to be. So this is what this boss would be like casually. Really crappy. See how much health he's chewing through? Don't, don't find yourself in this position. Practice that quick kill. You're going to be playing this game on emulator. You can make save states. Practice this. Practice this quite a bit. This is the trickiest quick kill in the game, but it's also the most crucial. Move up now. Fire now. One, two, three, four. Step over. One, two, three, four, five. By the time you throw out the sixth or seventh, he should be dead. While you're waiting for him to disappear, go ahead and move up to the door here so you can walk right through as soon as it opens. One, two, three, four, five text boxes to clear there. And come out here. Walk around the left edge of the room. And there you go. All right. One medallion to go. All right. Back into the sky sphere we go. All right. So we're going to go north and then west. And then south. And then south again. Uh, we're going to start out a lot the, w the, the way we did the first time. Go south and south. Now we're going to head east. And you know what? Taking damage here is not a big deal, and I will show you why. Just go ahead and bomb on through. Not a problem. Again, this is very similar to what we were doing before. Um, we go south. Now, before we went east, here we are going to... This is where we splinter off. Here we're going to go south. South again. East. South. Uh, now to the west. This is something we do not collect in any percent. Uh, but we do for 100%. Bomb this wall here. Get in. Um, and this guy is going to give us uh, another segment of life. Get it, and we walk out. East. East again. Now, we've got these two columns here. We're going to ring a bell and make a staircase appear. It's going to take us to this magical island in the sky. We'll walk into this room here. And we will obtain the strongest sword. This is definitely something we get in any percent. It is extremely crucial to get it. Back out to the stairs. It's going to take us back to where we were. We're going to backtrack a little bit by going west. North. West. North. Oh, jeez, really? Okay, north. Another north. Now we head east. Oh my goodness. Okay, whatever. I want to say it's the screen here. Yeah, it is. Okay, good. There's a... Uh, so here... So I tell you what, and I'll, I'll demonstrate. So on this screen here, bomb the door on the right, and it'll get you medicine if you need it. Alright, so east. North. Um, we're going to take this bottom west path here. Jeez. Um, and then 
west. Uh, we would normally go north, however, you can curl around to the east here. Blow this open. Save your game. I chose not to, uh, to reset. Uh, you can if you would like, though, at any point when you get to those. So we're going to go north now. North again. East. South. And into crypt number seven. Alrighty. So. This one's going to be really simple, comparatively speaking. North. Just kill these guys to get them out of the way. West. Well, Blimp Plywood One, thank you so much for the follow and welcome aboard the van. Let's light up this room. So this one, this one looks like here. Um, if you want to play this nice and safe, you can come down here, let the tentacle come down, and then uh, come up. Don't hit me, you suck. I didn't save before I came in here, did I? Darn it. Oh, well, that's fine. All right, so um, you could kill all these guys, or you could just ring the bell and walk right by them. Uh, I usually like I usually don't like to mess with these guys. I come around to the left, maybe stab one out of the way if I need. Oh, you actually know it here. Um, stab them out of the way if I need to, and then just move up. Oops, let's light this up. All right, so we're gonna switch to bombs. We need to bomb north here. North again. Let's get back to the wand. All right, now. So, we gotta kill this bat here, which is best done with uh, your sword, at, if you can. Alright, so now, the, the block pushing pattern in here is, uh, is fairly particular. So, what you wanna do is, so we've got these blocks here, one, two, three, that are right under me. One, two, three. You wanna push one down, three down, two to the left. If you screw that up, you have to reset the room, and that's a real pain. Once you have the key, you give yourself a nice little ring of the bell. All right, now, this next room here. Nice little way to get through it quickly and avoid taking damage. I want to enter this room on the right tile, and as soon as I... Oh, shoot. Dang it, dang it, dang it, dang it. Let me light it up. I want to enter this room on the right tile, and then as soon as I do, stab, and stab again. So that way that mummy doesn't get into your way. Okay? Now, this next room. Ah, come on. I'm going to stand here just to the left, wait a second, and then stab that guy and then move on through. And if you do that, the timing of it is such that you can kill him, kill him there, and the arrows won't hit you. One more time. So sit here and wait for a second, hit him, stand there, hit him again, let the arrows pass you by, and you're good. All right, you could mess with these guys, or you could ring the bell and go north. Push this over here, move across, push this here, push this here, push this here. Now you could move down and push that block to open this door, or you could ring the bell and go through. Right, let's, ring, let's light this up. Um, let's see here. We're going to ring the bell. Open this door going east. Turn on bombs. Bomb our way south. Kill this guy. Open this door. Kill these two guys. Pick up the strongest shield. This is not an any percent item. Just so you know. Backtrack. Come on back. Oops. To this room with the bat. Now we are going to bomb south. Uh, we got to kill this guy here. Now, see these three blocks here on the left? The middle one, push it right, and then the top one, push it up. Now we can come in here. Nice and easy. Kill him to get through. Uh, let me make sure. This next room I know is dark normally, so... We want to make sure it's lit up. As soon as you walk in, move up and stab to the right. That mummy's always going to be right there. 
um, so it's a reliable way to kill them. And then when you're on the top rank here, just push this block left to get on out. Make sure you got your bell equipped, because we're going to use it. One. I'll show you what this room looks like. Doesn't really matter, because you're just going to walk right by it. Two. Three times in a row. Here we go. Unfortunately, you cannot ring the bell in a room before a boss, so we have to kill these two guys. Luckily, it's just two of them. Uh, they take two hits from the strongest sword, and that's it. Okay, I've got plenty of life to do this next boss. Um, you want to make sure you're not too low on life, because you need to take at least one damage boost here. All right. I like to enter this room... Uh, yeah. Come on. Just get me to a place where... Okay, here we go. I'll make this save state right here. Um, so I like to get to a, so I like to enter this room on the right tile. I'm going to do the boss and then, and then explain how it goes. This one's not too tricky. That's it. Let me show you how this goes. So first thing we do, we're going to walk in the room. We're going to immediately move to the left, stay out of the way. As soon as he gets back, we're going to basically go back to the position that we were in before. Okay. So that's the first part of it. Move to the left, move back to the right, and right there is about where we should be, like kind of on that cross. Okay, now what I'm going to do here is move left, move right, and I'm going to turn down and damage boost upwards. That's going to get me right to the position I want to be. Remember, like I said before, it doesn't matter what direction you're hit from, it's the direction that you're facing, you'll always damage boost going backwards from where you're facing. So we want to take that damage boost going up. So once we do that, take the damage boost going up, we're going to press up. So, oh, shoot. I thought I had it there. So once the damage boost is done, so you see how now I'm facing up? As soon as, the dam as, soon as you land from the damage boost, you want to press up so that you're facing that way. And the timing should be such that once you're facing up, one, two, three. Now, you notice that I take, so in between each of the stabs, I take maybe like a little half step forward. That puts me in just the right position to continue to hit him, but not get hit by the orbs that are going around him. So, move to the left, back to the right, face down, get hit, face up, one step, two step, three. That's it. I'll do it. Oh, shoot. I'll do it again. Move left, back to the right, face down, turn up, one step, two, whoa, ooh, how did I get him to boost down? I, I've never done that before. All right, it's down, one, Wh what is, what is happening here? That's really strange. There we go, that's how that should look. <clears throat> So you have to wait for him to open. You have to hesitate for just a second for him to open up. One, two, three. Just like that. So move in. Move to left. Back to the right. Face down. Turn up. One. Or turn up. Hello. Man. Okay. Left. Right. Face down. One, two, three. I'll do it one more time. Hopefully successfully. Move to the left, back to the right, face down, boost, turn up, one, two, okay, so I got hit by the orb and it knocked me back, no big deal, as soon as he opens up, just hit him again. <laughs> yeah. uh, pick up this treasure chest, we now have our eighth and final medallion, we are almost done, folks, almost done. So we got a few more text boxes to clear through, and there's actually one more thing that we need to collect, and this is strictly to satisfy the 100% category. Um, what we're about to get is completely useless as far as the rest of what we need to do. But we go back into the Sky Sphere. We're going to go north. Now we're going to go east. damage and 
south. We're going to come around here to this door. We're going to bomb it open. Now! So this guy's going to give us more bomb capacity. We're not going to use another bomb for the rest of the run. Now, you might have noticed along the way that I was picking up these kind of wing-looking items. These do us no good except for this one point right now. We're going to turn on the wings, we're going to walk out, and as soon as we hit the outside, we're going to just go ahead and mash 2, and it's going to teleport us back to... It's going to teleport us back here. She's going to ask us if you want to save. Go ahead and mash through the yes. She'll go ahead and refill your life, and then you're good. Now, the door behind her is now open because we have all eight medallions. It is final boss fighting time. So, GG to you if you made it this far. Oh, actually, no, I shouldn't have saved it there. Step on the star teleports us in. We are now face-to-face -face with Dearth. One, two... Three, four, five. This is the sixth and final text box there is to clear. But I'm going to lay down my safe state here. All right. So here's how this boss works. He's going to disappear, and then he's going to reappear above me. He's then going to shoot out some fire and then start to fly towards me. After a little bit, he's going to disappear. He's then going to reappear below me and do that same thing, and he's going to alternate back and forth, appearing above me, below me, above me, below me, above me, below me. What you're going to notice during this fight is I am never, ever, 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 ever going to take as much as a half of a step to either the left or the right. I'm always going to stay in this rank right here, and the reason why we do that is that it manipulates him to always appear directly above and below us, as opposed to the sides. So... Here's how this is going to work. 32 hits is what it's going to take to kill him. Timing here is very important. So, let's go... Did I make a save state? Well, now I, I'm sure I did. Here we go. So he's going to disappear. Oh, no, I'm sorry. He's not going to disappear. I'm sorry. I, I got that wrong. So we're going to clear the last text box. Things are going to go dark. Then fire is going to appear around him. After the fire's been around him for maybe like about... I want to say maybe about like half, maybe three quarters of a second, he will then start to be vulnerable to hits. The rhythm stabbing with your sword is so crucial here because you want to try to kill him in as few cycles as possible. Optimally, you want to do this in five cycles. Um, if your timing is bad, it could take six or more. If you have extra potions, you might need to use them. Um, but if you don't, then you got to kill him in no more than six cycles. So... I'm going to go ahead and do the fight and then kind of go back and do it again and explain a little bit what's going on. There we go. That's the 32 hits. Okay, now, so, the way that I like to space it, the, the way that I like to space myself in relation to him when he's above me is, is like so. So I like to get a little distance and then stab, move forward, move forward, move forward. So I like to get to the point where after maybe like the third stab, then I'm directly beneath him. And the reason why is that I like to get in four stabs, and if I time it right, while I'm getting damage boosted back from his hit, I can actually stab while I'm damage boosting, and I can hit him a fifth time while I'm in mid-air from the boost. And so that way I can move back up and stab him optimally three more times, so when he's above you, the optimal cycle is eight hits. Let's see if I can get it. It's a little the timing is tough on an emulator, I will admit, but let's see if I can do it. A little space here. I almost had it. That was really close. It 
It's super tight. I'm telling you. There it is. Okay. The timing is really tight. When you're learning this, um, if you're getting seven hits on the top cycles, that's perfectly fine. Let me do it one more time. I was too far away. So I only got seven there. Okay, now, for the bottom cycle, um, your spacing is going to be a little different, and it's kind of hard to explain, so you kind of just have to watch. I tell you what, I'm going to lay down another save state right here. So I like to get maybe, like, like right at the tip of the fire that's above his head. And then four hits, and then I get boosted back. And then hopefully you can get in three there. If you're only getting six on the bottom cycles, that's fine. Four, boost, five, six, seven. That's optimal on the bottom cycle. So stand right about, like, here. Maybe it's a little more into the tip of the fire. And then... You see, once once I once I've got him against the wall, that's when I can really approach. So that way, um, um, so that way, when I get boosted back, I'm close enough to him that I can start doing damage more quickly. Oops, I hesitated too long there. This is probably only gonna be five. Okay, it's six. So and again, well, I tell you what, let's do this one more time. There we go. Okay. So I want to sp kind of position myself right about here. That was lazy. I only got seven, though. I got seven, though. That's fine. Ooh, I was almost too close there. What you can use... And I, I tell you what. Let me finish this out. And then I think it's only going to be two, three or four more hits. There we go. What you can use... And I'll, I'll go ahead. Oh, and now that it's lit, you can see it. Well, probably it would be better to do it. Um, when it's dark, because that's where it's going to be. But, okay. You see over, you see in the field there, over on the right-hand side, there's that little kind of blue kind of, um, I don't even know what to describe it. I guess it's supposed to be a little snow mound or something like that. But you see, there's three of them. There's one to the left, and then there's two to the right, one a little higher, but one a little lower. The one that's lower on the right-hand side is actually a good way to kind of, position where you should be on um you know on on the x axis if you will when it, or i'm sorry on on the on the y axis um when it comes to you positioning up top so let me go ahead and demonstrate that so here we go i'm kind of lined up with that and then Now, when it comes to... I want to be a little above it. When, oh, no. I'm sorry. I want to be about a tile above it. Um, when it comes to... I got too close. And I got hit twice. That's the danger. This is why spacing is so important. Okay. I want to be about a tile above it. And then come down. Only six there, that's fine. Got a tile above it, and then you can just start stabbing as soon as he comes into play. You get seven hits there, line up with it, approach. There we go. Let me do it one more time just from beginning to end so you can kind of see how it looks. Took a second hit there. There shouldn't be a big deal. Okay. So we've got 13 so far. Now it's 20. It's 26, so I need six more. There we go. All right, so, Dirt Dead. 
Princess Aurora comes out, you want to try and line yourself up with that um, with that little mound on the right because uh, Jaseda will always move to that position. So if you can get yourself lined up there um, before she comes out, then um, you'll save some time there. Master all the text. We teleport into here. We all walk up here. We got a few more text text boxes to mash through. The screen is going to fade to black, and when it does, that is time. That's the end of the run right there. That's when you're going to stop your timer for the last time. So, there we go. That is Newtopia 100% uh, broken down from beginning to end. Yo, Scala Kitty, thank you for the GG. So, um, uh, I hope you really enjoyed this. I hope you found it valuable, useful, um, all these things. Uh, for those of you that are watching live, and it looks like there are quite a few of you, um, I will be highlighting this and linking it and pinning it in my Discord channel. I'm also going to add it as a resource in the speedrun.com section for, uh, for the Newtopia page. So you can find it there. All right. So that's it. If you have any questions, uh, if you need me to explain anything further, if you're like, hey, where are those notes? Please join my Discord. I'm gonna go ahead and put the, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put the link here in my chat um, so that you can uh, hop on in there. Uh, the more the merrier. I've got a dedicated channel just for Newtopia where I'll have all these resources in there. You can ask me questions. We can get discussion going. And uh, yeah, for those of you that are interested in learning this game, um, I'm more than happy to teach you anything that you want to know. So uh, please, by all means, uh, be a part of what's going on in there. All right. So thank you everyone for watching. I really appreciate it. Um, and that's that.